All right, I should, let me make sure. Yep, I should have audio now. Sorry. <laughs> I wasn't planning on going live, so I didn't have my stuff set up. I apologize. Hey, everybody, Four Corners in here acted up already. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Four Corners Custom Embroidery. I'm sorry, Customs. Precious Love, Beverly Smith, Big Boy Prince, Demia. Hopefully, I'm saying that correctly. Um, Beverly Smith. Georgia Lee Adams, Alicia Miguel, Google Zamaya, and Jules. Hopefully, I said that correctly. Miss Crafty Creations, the Cynthia's. Thank you, Debbie D. Hey, Debbie D. How are you? Erica McNeil, Linda Gray. Thank you, the Sewing Brat, Patrina Gosha. Hello, Kim Smith. Thank you, Dimps Designs. I know, right? I did come over here. <laughs> Thank y'all. Linda Gray, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you, Mike Steve. Thank you very much. It's funny. Um, let me get... I am going to ring the bell because Four Corners, I'm not about to ignore you, but it is funny when Uni was saying that she thought y'all were live and I was in there and I'm just chatting up a storm. <laughs> well, not chatting up a storm, but I was chatting and I was like, they ain't responding. What in the world? They usually respond to chat. And I was like... It's saying people are in here, but I don't see it. <laughs> it was a replay, and I was like, oh, duh. feel like a dummy. But anyway, thank you, Four Corners. Woo! <laughs> thank you for all of the Super Chats. Thank you. <laughs> I am um, working. Hey, there, Dorothy Swindle. Welcome. Wendy G, good evening. I'm working on two different orders right now. And um, I was trying to work and listen to um, to Uni, and then Uni was like, "Somebody go live," and I was like, "I really." <laughs> so here we are live. So I was wanting to know if you guys would like to work on embroidering some sweatshirts with me. Sorry, embroidering hoodies, but I also have some sweatshirts that I need to bling out. And all of this, y'all, technically needs to be done by next Friday. So. I have a lot of orders that I need to get out, and um, I've been swamped, beyond swamped, on top of swamped in the last two months, roughly, um, to the point where I have some things that have slipped through the cracks, and I need to get, get, get it together. That's what the Get It Together Challenge is for, and I've been working on that, too. Big Boy Prince, thank you. You in Four Corners again. Woo! <laughs> thank you I appreciate the super chat thank you thank you thanks for tuning in yes I replayed them all day okay cool uh oh Bobby 1997 please Bobby make sure that you tune in on Sunday if you can to remind us that you got your red line but congratulations on your red line baby <laughs> oh that's what's wrong I ain't winning the PPE and pumping, pumping my ink, that's what's wrong. I don't, I don't have my PPE on, so I'm going to have to close my eyes right now. Because my shades ain't, I got my glasses on. <laughs> that's why the bell wasn't ringing. Um, I saw something. Hang on. Loretta Bayless, hello, Wendy G. Thank you. Wendy G got her cricket yesterday. Congratulations on your cricket maker. <laughs> Yes, congratulations. Tune in Sunday so more people can ring with you. Because I figure it's going to be a small crowd today because folks is with their families. So that's why I really wasn't planning on um, going live. But here we are. We're going to have some fun. Y'all can work with me. Um, My husband and best friend is bugging me about learning how to do embroidery. We got you, girl. We can do embroidery. And my admission to close the baby's booty. <laughs> Thank you, baby. <laughs> Thank you, Patrice. Even though you need to save yours for tea, ma'am. Good tea. Good tea. Not tea. Good tea. <laughs> you had me cracking up off of that. I thought about you because I went and got my Starbucks yesterday and I was like, it better be mixed right. <laughs> and it was. So that was a good thing. Um, Late night crafting with Stacy. Hello. Welcome. Thank you, Arlene Wade. Welcome. Thank you. Um... Hi, Paulette Hunter, the sewing brat. Hello. Come for you, big boy prince. Get your rest for tomorrow. I know, right? Wanda Hater 
It's been a minute checking in from Atlanta. Welcome from Atlanta. Welcome back, my dear. Welcome, welcome. All right, you guys. So let me show you what I'm working on. Do rhinestones see Cynthia? It's, it's going to be both, actually. <laughs> it's going to be both. Rhinestones are on the sweatshirts and embroidery is on the hoodies. But I'm going to show you both here in a second. And thank you for coining it. Woo! Oh, I'm supposed to ring it like a lady. <laughs> hilarious all right so let me show you guys actually i'm gonna show you what's going on the hoodies first and show you how my customer slipped the okie doke on me with this order mike's teas actually i need that information i asked you for if you don't mind please so that i can get that like asap because we running out of time but thank you mike's teas in four corners <laughs> thank you i appreciate it <laughs> hey patricia gosha so let me show you the okie doke my customer slipped on me right so i have so there's that order right here and here's the other order let me grab it i have stuff everywhere y'all because of how many orders i have to do it's just and I'm still not done with the jackets because more jackets have been added. Um, and the sweatshirts are for the same dance team. So now I have sweatshirts for them to bling. More jackets to embroider. These hoodies to embroider. Technically shirts that I need to DTF. But uh, with Betty being down, I'm trying to get the first... Um, I forget what I named him, but the first DTF machine trying to get it back up and running. I unclogged the print head last night, hopefully. I haven't checked it yet. Um, so I did waterfall on it and the ultrasonic thingy that I did the video on. So I'm waiting to see if I got that done, but I just, y'all, it's been crazy. So I haven't really had time to breathe, let alone, you know, work on other stuff. But with this order, the hoodies are embroidery, but the shirts are supposed to be DTF, but I may have to do vinyl, and I don't want to. But at any rate, here are the shirts, or the hoodies, rather. Here are the hoodies. And this, he got these from the flea market. So these are the hoodies. It's a lawn care company. He does... He used to be my lawn care guy, but I moved, so I'm not there anymore. So these are the hoodies that he got from, and they're big. Um, so I have to, we agreed, hey, Jesse, we agreed on embroidering the front, but then he slipped on the back after we agreed and he paid and everything. So um, only because... I've known him for such a long time and well not a super long time but I just I didn't even charge him y'all I didn't even bother charging so we're just gonna go with it but let me go back up and say thank you to Four Corners again like a lady thank you thank you very 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 much <laughs> thank you thank you um let me see. So I'm going to switch you guys over. Crafting with your flam flamboyant creator. Hey, love that name. I'm going to uh, flip you guys over to the... Um, I'm sorry, the sewing bread. Are you familiar with Terial Magic Fabric Stabilizers? If so, what are your thoughts about this product? I am familiar with their Fabric Stabilizer Spray. Uh, very familiar with it. The stabilizer spray is awesome. So if the stabilizers are anything like the spray, then I would love them. Um, but no, I've never used them. Um, let me know where you've seen it. Um, like it's not sold on Amazon, I would assume. Um, if you know where I can find it, then I'll look it up and then give it a shot and see how it's going. I'm still having issues deciding on what stabilizer to use, Allison. What, um, on what? Is there something in particular or are you talking about just in general? And we can talk about that too. Four Corners, thank you very much again for the super, super chat. Woo! 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. Um, let me, hey, Isu, how are you? Let me switch you guys over to my, um, so there's two things that I use when I'm working with embroidery. One thing, the main program that I use is um, Sew It Pro. Hey, Shayna, how are you? So I'm going to open up Sew It Pro. And then, no, I don't want to update. And then I'm going to switch the screen over so that you can see what it is I'm doing for him. So here is Soa Pro. Thank you very much for quarters for your super chat. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, when you are here in Soa Pro, we're going to open up his. Um, I got to remember where it is. I'm pretty sure it's on my D drive because I've been having to clean things off of my computer because I'm going to have to turn in my computer to Best Buy because the battery is swelling in my laptop and which it shouldn't be as much as I paid for this darn thing. But I bought the extra warranty, so they're going to fix it under the warranty and... So I'm going to be without my laptop for two weeks. And I got to figure that out because I have my old laptop. But I got the new one for a reason. And I haven't had it but a year and a half, I think. I don't even, yeah, just over a year and a half. But at any rate, I apologize. I'm talking. Let's see. We are looking for gray. You can see the FG. Let me make sure I'm in the right place. I don't think I'm in the right place. Where am I? Where is it on the wheel column? No, it's not on the wheel column. Okay. So let's go back. And we will go here. And we will go here. And I've been trying to um, combine files as well. And it's been killing me. All right. I think it's under here. There it is. Okay. So his sweatshirts. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's right. So for this particular customer, I'm going to show you something else he pulled on me. So here is the design that I was going to put on the front of his sweatshirt. Right, it's that time of year, lawn and landscaping, and it's normally um, black with lime green thread um, for the highlights on the mower. And he decided this time he didn't want this large on the front. See, this is the, this is how customers. So, just to FYI, if you're looking to get into doing um designing of any sort even embroidery your customers tend to like do the bait and switch type situation so he wanted he asked to have his sweatshirts done his hoodies done and this is how i did them before so okay sure this is how we're going to do them here's your bill blah blah pay the bill well i don't want it done like that this time and i'm like okay what do you want and so you find out that They've decided they want to change what they want. How you go back and adjust the estimate and the not the estimate, the invoice and all that jazz after you done already got the money. So it's just like, you know what? This is the type of stuff that kind of annoys me a little bit. But at any rate, so here is what I did before. And what I did for him is I... um. Let's see if I can't find where I did his mock-up. Because he was like, no, that's not what I want. This time I want it small on the front of the hoodie. And I'm like, okay. Um, how are we going to do this small? So I'm thinking left chest logo. And sure enough, 
that's pretty much what he was wanting. Um, that's that mock up. So I do my mock ups in, um, you know what? I should, well, I don't really want to open up Photoshop and then it will, um, it could end up being too much stuff open on my computer. So let me see if I can't find it right here. But yeah, so he decided he wanted to do left chest logo on, here they are. There they are. Okay. Here they are. All right. So here is what he's decided to do. I thought, right? He decided, okay, so I want um, just my name on the back. So, okay. that That's not how we ended up agreeing. And he changed it all the way around. And I'm just going to show it to you on my phone because it's faster. I'll just go to his text messages and show it to you there because I'm still waiting to hear from him. Um, so this is what he decided he wants now on the front of the hoodie. So I don't know how well you can see that. I sent that to him. So now the name is going to be on the right and the left chest is his logo itty bitty, which I'm hoping that's, well, it is going to stitch up because I have that, I already have it digitized for hats. So I'm just going to use the hat file to put the left chest on the shirt and then digitize the, I think it's two, three names, something like that to go on the right chest. Okay. Then he says, no, I want something on the back too. Okay. So what do you, what do you want on the back? Cause you're putting the logo on the front. So then he says he wants all of his services that he offers on the back of the shirt. So, and he proceeds to send me a copy of his business card, which shows um, everything that he does. And then he even typed, he texted me some more stuff. So I'm having, I had to digitize. Um, oh, you know what? Y'all couldn't see that because the thing was small. Hold on. Let me trans, trans, just send that so that you can see what he did decide he wanted on the front of the shirt. My bad. Here it is. I apologize. There it is. So that's the way he decided he wanted it. And like I said, I'm going to use the hat em um, embroidery file to do on the left chest. So now on the back, let me show you what I've come up with. And I'm waiting on his approval. Um, but I think I'm just going to go ahead and stitch this anyway. So this is what I came up with. And this is now this this particular program is so at pro. And in this program, what I do is I take um, already digitized images and edit them in this program. OK, but when I want to make my own digitize my own files, I use this program and this is will come hatch. All right. And so I put this together and I'm hoping that looks OK. He hasn't given approval or anything yet. Um, so I'm waiting on him. But meanwhile, I don't want to wait because I need to get these done. And I'm thinking about just going on and stitching this because I actually I mean, this is what he sent me. So why not go ahead? There's one more thing that he that's on his card and I couldn't read the card because there was a glare on it. So something about concrete and I don't know what that is. So at any rate, the dilemma that I'm dealing with today with this particular order. So with this shirt, what we'll do is we will embroider the front. Okay. On the yellow hoodies, we're going to neon yellow. We're going to use neon yellow thread to highlight the this part of the mower okay on the orange ones we'll use orange to highlight that part of the mower 
All right, so that's how um, the front is going to be in the name, of course. Uh, it's going to be black and the neon colors. And then on the back, I'm just going to do black with this. So that's the plan for his hoodies. And that's what I'm going to work on doing today. And let me get back to this so that I can pull this up and look at the chat because the chat is hidden. I apologize. I didn't, I didn't get to see the chat. Um, Where am I? I saw a question. Crafting with your flamboyant creator. I'm thinking about buying an embroidery machine, which is the best to start with. I would say a five by seven single needle embroidery machine at home, unless you're trying to um, go like if you're trying to start a business with it and you're pretty sure you already have customers that are asking for embroidery and you want to go large embroidery, then I would shoot for an industrial machine and we can talk about that. But if you're just trying to get into it just to see if you like it, give it a shot, you know, that type deal, then find a five by seven single needle embroidery machine. There are a few out there. I would recommend the brother um, like 770p800. Um, there's also an SE, and I know I'm throwing letters and numbers and stuff at you, and I apologize. But type in Brother 5x7 in Google search. And it's uh, Brother 5x7 embroidery machine. And it should pull up a list of all the different types that they have available um, that you can use for embroidery. Just make sure that it says embroidery. All right. Um, I need to go on Amazon to see if there's any on sale. I doubt it, but I need to see. Um, usually right now, those are running about a thousand dollars. If that's just like way out of your budget, then you can find the four by four embroidery machines and the four by four embroidery machines are a lot more affordable. They're about four hundred dollars and you can start out with that like left chest logos you can do with the four by four embroidery machine. There's also a lot of little projects that you can do um, there. That machine made me pretty decent money when I first started with it. So, um, yes, it's a smaller footprint, but you just need to maximize what you're doing with that small footprint and you can make it work. So just let me know um, what you're talking about, you know, doing with it, what your goals are, and we can work towards um, getting you the information that you need to get you started properly. In general, Allison says, but I'm getting ready to embroider a jean jacket and the design has 47,000 stitches. So it's a jean jacket, denim material, as long as it's like the stiff old school jean jacket type stuff, you can just use a basic cutaway with that. Um, if it's the light flimsy um, denim, then you may want to use a little bit heavier of a cutaway stabilizer. But because it is a um, denim, you don't, denim is such a sturdy fabric, you don't really have to be overly concerned with what stabilizer you use with that, but because it is a wearable item, something that probably will be washed, um, you know, somewhat frequently, not every day, like a sweatshirt or something like that, but it will be washed. So you want to use a cutaway and um, allow those stitches to have a nice permanent stable um nice permanent stable foundation on which those stitches will live on that jacket. So anything that you wear, I generally recommend using um, cutaway stabilizer. You could use tear away, but with that many stitches, you really don't want to not support those stitches, you know, as you really want to support those stitches as well as you can. And tear away just is not the right material for that. Um, she says it was Amazon and I saw the demo on their website. It comes in a liquid. Oh, yes, that's it. That's it. Um, no, you can't substitute that for cutaway. I don't think, uh, well, let me not say that. Let me not say that because I can see using it for a handkerchief and making sure that the handkerchief doesn't, um, um, pucker. But the problem is um, it washes away. And so what you end up with is, I'm trying to think, do I have something? I, I really need to embroider something 
and leave it up here so that I can show you guys what I'm saying when you embroider without stabilizer or if you embroider with tearaway and then you wash it and then you wind up with this warped looking embroidery that's all gnarled looking when it comes out of the wash and the dryer um, and it's not laying nice and flat like it's supposed to. I mean, that's what the stabilizer is for is to help keep everything nice and stable and good looking. Um, so you could with a handkerchief, mainly because usually hankies are used for, for the most part, they're used now for decor more so than, you know, actual use, like way, way, way back in the day, we men and women would use a hanky to blow their nose and stuff like that. But now there's clinics, you know what I'm saying? And who wants to walk around with snot? So, you know, the hanky may be used at a wedding or at a funeral. And then after that, it's kept, you know, maybe or worn in a pocket or something like that. It's not like used. So you might could get away with using just Terrio Magic for something like that. And then um, once you get the embroidery done, then, you know, as long as it's a, a nice lightweight design, you should be okay. Um... The Educated Natural. Hello, my dear. How are you? Dense Designs. I can digitize. I don't. I prefer not to digitize for other people. I digitize for myself. And even then, sometimes I will um, send them out to Vitter and have him digitize for me, especially if it's something like, for instance, um, this I would have never been able to digitize. And I'm going to show y'all this because I need to stitch this out too um, again. So I was thinking these are, what do you call them? Not totes, lunch bags, right? So they have the insulation on the inside. Um, and to keep, from, to keep from stitching through the insulation, there's a pocket on the front. And so I decided to stitch it. And okay, so here's an example of what I mean um whoever um uh, i saw who was doing the jean jacket but this is what i mean this is this is camp like a thick canvas material pretty stiff it's not jean jacket but it's still a, a fairly sturdy canvas right and i was thinking that i could embroider this on this canvas without stabilizer and it should be okay um because i thought it was sturdy enough right well under normal circumstances if i were to do something lightweight then yeah i probably could have gotten away with it but because this has a lot of feel stitches to it it ended up warping the pocket and that doesn't present well that looks terrible if you were to see that in the store you'd be like cuz what in the world was these people thinking right but if if you this is what i mean when you embroider on um, like a t-shirt or something like that without stabilizer a lot of times it'll end up warping like this when it comes out of the wash and stuff because there's no stabilizer meanwhile on this one I did use stabilizer but I was a smart aleck and used tear away all right I didn't use cutaway so the difference between the two is obvious you know, the difference is there. You can see it. But this one, it's still, that's a lot of stitches on this fabric. It needs something more stable, right? Then in addition to that, I'm trying to embroider in a limited space. This is, that's not a lot of space, that pocket there. So I'm going to actually end up stitching this out as a patch, all right? And then attaching it two because i ordered two new bags but i gotta get them they're at a friend's house um who we ordered some stuff together and i just i haven't been to go get it but anyways and she's been busy her daughter had a baby family was sick long story short i gotta go get those bags but anyway so when i get them i'm going to put them on as a patch but this is you know like that denim that's why stabilizer is so important this is what you want to avoid all that puckering. So stabilizer actually, in a way, is one of the most important things with embroidery because without the proper stabilizer, your embroidery is going to look like trash. That's just how that goes, unfortunately. 
Um, but I don't digitize. So like this design I sent out and had digitized. There is no way I would have been able to digitize that. I'm just telling you, that's just entirely too much information, too much detail. No, sorry. I, and I don't have the time. I don't have time to digitize. So I send it to somebody else. And while they digitize, I do other things and try and get other stuff done. So, um, have a good nap, 40. What is the name of the software that you use? I use So What Pro. The link is in the description. It's under all of my videos. So What Pro is the software. It's um, $65 uh, for the editing software. Now, for the digitizing software, the digitizing software is Wilcom Hatch. That one is $1,000, but they have payment plans, and I think there was a sale, Black Friday-type sale going on with it. Let me check um, real quick because I'm pretty sure I did see that. More than positive I saw that. Um, yeah, it's on sale right now. Let's see. It may not let me see the price, but yeah, right now, here, let me bring this down so that y'all can, oh, well, I got to flip the screen. Hold on. Um, so now, first off, if you want Wilcom Hatch, I'm going to tell you to go here to, um, John Deere's Embroidery Legacy. So this is digitizingmadeeasy.com. I'm gonna drop this in the chat um, as well so that you'll have it, but it's digitizingmadeeasy.com. And the reason why I'm suggesting you to buy it through his affiliate link is because he also creates embroidery fonts that you can use with this software and you get free fonts if you buy through him. He will give you fonts to go with your program. So, and you get to choose what you want. He has over, uh, I want to say 800 different fonts that you, yeah, over 800 fonts that you can use with this software will come hatch. So if you go to that page, click on buying it and then buy now, it takes you to the official will come hatch website and you'll see it's actually eleven $1 hundred dollars my bad well right now it's on sale for eight hundred dollars so if you are able to purchase this and it comes with a academy pass where you learn how to use it and they give you classes and stuff um this is Wilcom hatch all right so it's seven ninety nine so if you can buy that it is an excellent program very very heavy duty very okay so if you're used to cricket and silhouette um so what pro has a sister software called so art that one is 79 dollars. you can digitize with that one too but that's almost like digitize that's almost like using cricket design space whereas wilcom hatch is more like using silhouette business edition you get way more features and you're able to manipulate manipulate things in way more detail than what you can in Cricut Design Space. All right, so just keep that in mind. This one is Wilcom Hatch, and the other uh, for digitizing is So Art, and it's $79. Both So What Pro, which is an editing program, and So Art, which is a digitizing program, both of those are on my website. So if you want to go there and grab either one of those, if you're interested in doing any form of digitizing, then you can do that. Um, on my website all right but that's the software that i use um yeah that is a lot of things to add making with Marilyn is the fool the sewing brat thank you she said it's the se 1900 is the five another five by seven um embroidery machine thank you i apologize i'm a little behind in the chat chris uh customers can drive me crazy and i just have to walk away from my phone and when you're on a time crunch it takes forever for them to respond which is frustrating and yeah i am now, the thing is with this particular customer, there's not really a time crunch. The only time crunch is the fact that he's working and it's cold outside. So I'm sure he would love to have his hoodies, right? But the other customers that I have, they have like the one that I'm going to show you here in a little bit. Um, once we get the front of the sweatshirt set up so that they can start stitching. But these other 
um, hoodie, sorry, but the other sweatshirts, they have a competition next Friday or Saturday. So I just, I got to get these done um, no later than Thursday of next week. And folks just, everybody came at one time this, this year. I don't know what it was. Everybody came at one time. So it's been really, really busy. Um, I just saw another question. Crafted Creations, I recently ordered one. Cool. Let me know how that works out. Precious Love says, I have an SE625 brother. That is a good one. Yes, I have a small machine as well. Should the wording on the back be alphabetized? Miss Lori, I wasn't trying to do that. <laughs> I wasn't trying to do that much. I swear I wasn't. That was, that was not, um, mm-mm. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was supposed to be appetized or not, but as of right now, it's not going to be. Um, and it's not alphabetized on his card, if I'm not mistaken. I'll look again, but I'm pretty sure it's not alphabetized on his business card, so I don't think he would care. Uh, yeah, no, it's not alphabetized on his cutting on his business card. So, as you see, see that there's a glare on there. But I couldn't read what that one thing was because of that glare. And it says concrete, laying concrete something. I guess that's drain, but I don't know for sure. And I didn't want to put that on the back of the shirt and it be the wrong thing. Um, thank you, Lily Bonds. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, let's see. Let's see. What digitizer do you use, Allison? I use Vitter. Uh, VitterDigitizing.net. V I T O R D I G I T I Z I N G dot N E T. Nope. N E T. Pretty sure that's it. I'm going to double check just to be sure and make sure I don't send y'all to some off the wall website on accident. Um. Yeah, bitterdigitizing.net. That's who I have been using lately because he's, I just go on his website, fill everything out, put the thing in, pay the money and just wait. You know, I don't have to go back and forth and nothing like that. So, um, hey, baby giant services. Welcome. Hey, Kara. So, yeah, that's where we are right now with this particular shirt. And I really need to get these done. And like I said, um, I also need to set up and stitch these out as patches so that I can put them on the rest of the stuff that I have to do there. And while I'm thinking about it, I'm going to go ahead and show you. I really need to set these up, though. But I'm going to go ahead and show you the other job that I'm working on. And with this one, this is rhinestones. So this is the skirt that the girls will be wearing, okay? Super cute. And they're going to be wearing white sweatshirts with the skirts, okay? So I had to find rhinestones to match this gold. So rhinestones to match that color gold. And unfortunately, a lot of times people don't realize that rhinestones only come in certain colors. So, like, they wanted um, Greek letters going down the front of the shirt. The inside of the letter is going to be the gold color, and the outside of the letters is going to be a purple color. Um, but, you know, trying to specify a purple color is kind of not possible because rhinestones only come in certain colors right so um i've been trying to i'm pretty sure i'm going to use light topaz um stones to get that goldish color because the actual gold rhinestones are not the right shade so gold hold on is this it? Is this light tone? I just think this is topaz. Let me see. No, this is just topaz. And if I had the camera set up, here's the light topaz. Okay. 
So if I had the camera set up properly, I could show you with the stones laying on or beside the skirt. So as you can see how I think topaz would be a better choice than trying to use, uh, I think it's called it's hematite. What is the name of that stone? There's one that's actually like a metallic gold instead of a crystal diamond gold. All right, so I don't know if y'all are going to be able to see these or not. I'm going to try. So here are, and then the daggum. See, I had, this is too orange in my opinion. Oh. So see, I'm trying to match. This one is light topaz. This one is topaz. And I was trying to go for, um, and here's the gold again, right? And I was trying to go for as close as to gold as possible. So I'm thinking that this one is going to be it. Uh, when I laid it on the sweatshirt, um, when I laid it on the sweatshirt, the white sweatshirt with the gold skirt, Beside it, it seemed like this light topaz was going to be the right choice. So I'm hoping it is. Um, yeah, because see, I'm looking at it now, and it's it's just it's so close, it's scary. So I'm going with the light topaz, and y'all, and I have to order the stones and have them here by then. They just decided yesterday on what they wanted. So I have theoretically less than a week to get this done. And the thing is, which is why we have the Get It Together Challenge. This is why we're having the Get It Together Challenge because what I'm finding is one customer wants what they want by when they want it. Then another customer who they want what they want by when they want it, but then something goes wrong and that pushes it back. Then another one changes what they want, but then they want what they want when they want it and everybody all wants everything all at the same time. And it's like, I'm one person and how? How am I going to manage to get all of this done? So that doesn't include recording classes, that doesn't include um, doing private classes. Yeah, and it doesn't include living life and sleeping and eating and just being a person. So yeah, it's been um, it's been interesting over the last couple of months. So, like for instance, the thank you, Jesse Gibson. I think that light topaz. Thank you, crafting with um, flamboyant man phaserite. Love it, love it. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's a huge time crunch this week. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. So, um, so yeah, when, when, when crap hits the fan, it's always fun times around here and your printer breaks. So other shirts, oh, that doesn't include another order I have for 25 shirts plus four sweatshirts, I, four hoodies for a another order that has to be done because next Saturday, which I think is the fourth. Yeah. Next Saturday, the fourth is a marathon and their shirts need to be done. And theirs are supposed to be DTF and DTF is down right now. So, and trying to get, so it's just like ah, everything at one time. And I may have to do vinyl with that one because the DTF is acting up. So yeah, people, um, you know, it, it can be stressful, which is why I'm trying to get out of it, not get out of it as far as teaching it and doing it for you guys, but only certain customers like the lawn care guy. I'll probably refer him to somebody else after this. A um, couple of other orders that I have, I'll probably refer to somebody else after this because I just I can't do it all. And I have two strong customers that have been there for like day super one. 
And so those I'm not going to refer them out just yet. And maybe a, a good while before I refer them out because they're pretty flexible and they, well, the one is flexible and they understand the cheer team has kind of been always, it's always usually a high stress situation with their stuff. And those jackets need to be finished by next week too, because they're going to want to wear the jackets to the competition. So yeah, lots of fun. I have a schedule for customers. I let them know any changes or if they can't give me information by a certain date, they need to reschedule. I found this helps me with custom sewing and Barb. I'm, I'm going to have to do that for my dance team. Um, but the thing is, I know that your t- so with the dance team, a lot of the problem with that particular um, customer situation is they're dealing with parents and parents are putting in input about what you know, like for instance, the the jackets, right? Jackets are straightforward. I know what goes on the front. I know what goes on the back. I don't need to talk to anybody. But parents may not pay on time to the team. So if they haven't paid, then they're not getting the jacket stitched. But I have the jacket. So then when the parent pays, all of a sudden it's last minute. And now I got to do this jacket. And the parent is like, okay, well, now I want to put customization on the back. Bruh, you're adding. You see, so it's that's just one part of it. And then sometimes the parents can't agree on what kind of design they want on a shirt or whatever. And so, and that actually, now to think about it, I have other shirts that I'm supposed to be doing for them by next week. And they just finished designing that one too. They finished designing that one um, Tuesday, Wednesday. So yeah, if you see me balled up in a ball somewhere next week, sucking my thumb and rocking back and forth and all that jazz, that's why. And then on top of that, now my captains who are captains here on the YouTube channel, I need to schedule them as well and do a session with them and get them together, which should have been this coming Sunday. Um, so yeah, a lot of stuff going on around here. All right, so let's get to it ain't no point me sitting here belly aching about it i gotta get it done so the um hoodies we are going to put them over here because the um hoop master i'm gonna hoop use the hoop master to make sure that the logo should i use the hoop master i may not need to use the hoop master because it's so straightforward. I shouldn't need to use the hoop faster. It's just a, just a hoodie. So let's go ahead and just mark them. We'll mark them, and I'm just going to not use the hoop master this time because it's pretty simple, straightforward. One left chest, right chest, and then. Um, but I'm not going to put the names on them yet. So I'm going to clear off the table and get the camera on so that you can see marking and getting ready for the embroidery on the hoodie and go ahead and do that Kara I've been yeah I am I am I am I am spread too thin but that's the way we do things around here my friend all right let's see cutting table cutting table please please cutting table please you work please um, cutting table right there. Boom. Yes. Thank you, cutting table. All right. So you are going to see Valley Girl for Life Creations. Hello. How are you? Um, you're going to see my cutting table has um all kinds of stuff on it from. Uh, me trying to clean out from up under here. So these are some DTF transfers that I did a while back. And I need to finish those as well. Uh, there's Prince. Prince is rasterized and ready to rumble if I get a shirt done. And here's some things I ordered from Cricut. Um, just really quick foil kit for the Cricut Joy and some foil transfer sheets. You know, I figure why not give it a shot, see what I can make with it. It'll probably be something that will sit for, you know, another 12, 24 months before I do anything with it. 
And then I got me a trimmer from Cricut, all because of the best uni and the link that she has. Um, and I'll see about putting her link in the description below because this stuff was on sale, y'all. And I was like, y'all, because I've been wanting one of these um, because I have the big guillotine kind and it's just so clunky. It gets in the way sometimes. And then I got me some new Cricut mats, which I desperately needed. So we're going to slide this stuff out of the way. Matter of fact, I'm going to put this right here under the table. All right, and I still haven't cleaned off my um, table from where we did, what did we do? Oh, the Philippines shirt last Sunday, because I took a break. I was like, I can't, I didn't have all of the information from the cheer team, don't have all of the confirmation from the sweatshirt, so you know what? I'm just going to chill out, and I did, so now I'm going to have to pay for that. And, and I was getting down from off of doing the jackets that I did do. So, it was a lot of work. A lot of work. Okay. So, we're going to move all of this out of the way. Because those hoodies are pretty big. Alright. And he does not want bling on his hoodies, I assure you. So, we're going to move that. My scissors. I set those right here for right now. And move this out of the way. Move this out of the way. Because I'm going to have to come back to that here shortly. And my planner. Big, my pretty planner. Pretty perfect planner. I'm going to set that right here. All right. Now we can cook with Crisco. Why do I have two rhinestone brushes? Don't know. Okay, so this hoodie, hoodies are pretty straightforward, kind of like um, everything else that I tell folks about. Let's get you up some so that you can see. Okay, so... Just like I tell you guys with doing t-shirts, um, you have to use the armpit as the center chest, okay? So even with men, the armpit still hits center chest. So when we're measuring to put a left chest, right chest logo, you still want to go from the armpits and from the neck line down so if you go from the neck line down to the armpit that's pretty much where we're going to put the logo right so i'm going to grab this to come down from the neck line as you see this is nowhere near big enough to go across the front of the shirt so that i can determine where the center point is but i don't have to have the center point because i'm not doing the center chest um, but i will be on the back so eventually i'm going to need um, I may have to get my super long ruler, but at any rate, so here we go. We have our neck line up here. And when you come straight down and intersect, this is about where we want to put the, um, logo. So you'll look online and look at where to do a left chest logo placement and a lot of times what you'll read online it'll say from seven to nine inches down um is the general rule of thumb and that's why i don't use that because like on this hoodie which is a size 4x that's not uh, that's that's going to be up by his neck and it's not going to do him any good so this is a, a pretty big shirt pretty big guy so it needs to come down to where his breast intersects on his hoodie, okay? And if it makes you feel comfortable, you can bring it up just a little bit from the armpit, you know, maybe about two inches up from where the armpit seam is. But for the most part, I usually put stuff right there at the armpit and it works out great. So let's go ahead and mark this. And I'm going to use, let's see if this is gonna show. No, this ain't gonna show. So let me use my other chalk roller. All right, so here is 
the arm seam. Here is the center area. So I'm going to first do a little line there that'll help me see where to put the um, center of the logo. And then here is, yikes, that's not straight. That's not straight, that's straight. I still don't know if that looks straight. Okay. And I'm going to put my line there. And then I'm going to do the same over here because I know I'm putting names on this side or his name on this side. So again, same thing. I'm going to put my center line and then I'm going to mark directly across. All right, so center line. Oops. And the good thing about the chalk um, roller is usually I can just use friction and rub it right out. No water, no anything. All right, so I have a place to put his business logo and a place to put his name, all right? Now, I can also go ahead and mark for the um, logo on the back or that list of stuff on the back. I can go ahead and mark for that. The only downside, in my opinion, of me marking for that right now is I'll have to go over there and look at the size of that whole thing, right? Because it's a pretty big design. And that way I know for sure where I'm going to put it. So if I look at it, let me get you switched over. Why is that camera doing that? Ugh, stupid camera. I'm going to have to check that here in a minute. Wrong thing. This one. Okay. So my camera is frozen. I'm going to have to fix it. But for right now, if you look at the size of this particular design, um, if I select everything, this is 9 inches high by 16.6 .6 inches wide. Now, because I'm pretty sure all of these hoodies are big hoodies, that's not that big of a deal. But 16 inches wide is pretty significantly big. That's very, very big. Um and I'll show you that here in a moment. So we have to remember 9 by 16.6. .6, okay. So let's go back to the cutting table. 9 by 16.6. .6. Where is my ruler? Because I don't want to use a um, measuring tail. Here we go. Is this big enough? I don't think that's big enough. Nope. That's not big enough. Let me find... 9 by 16.6. .6. Oh, here we go. Okay. So, 9 by 16.6. .6. So, the first thing I want to do is determine how wide this shirt is, right? And I know you can't see this too much because of just how big it is but I'm going to try okay so this the back of this shirt from armpit seam to armpit seam is basically 30 and a half inches okay so I'm going to adjust this just a smidge to put it off so that I can center the 30 inches and make it easier for me for math because we know half of 30 is 15 so here's 15 inches right here. So I'm going to go ahead and mark the center for the 15 so that I'll know where that is when I'm ready to use that. Okay, so that's the halfway point on the back of this. Now, usually when I do um, designs on the back of a shirt, I try to put it in between the shoulder blades 
But what is, oh, even though I'm asking this, but I can't see the chat. What is the issue with me putting that information between the shoulder blades with this particular item? What would be the, why would I not put it between the shoulder blades? Who can answer that for me? And I'm going to get my phone to put these rulers up and see who was able to tell me why I would not put it between the shoulder blades. Very good, Rosie. Very good, Arlene. It's because of the hood. If I put the hood down, when they, when, you know, when they're not wearing it, you ain't gonna be able to see all of that stuff. So we need to bring it down first and foremost. And we need to keep in mind that it's gonna be 16 and a half. Okay, so that's the other thing. Let me show you what 16 and a half is. So this ruler is 18 inches. Okay, so 16 and a half is right here so this is how much real estate side to side we're covering on the back of this hoodie so you're talking about this is a 4x if i were to get a small hoodie this would probably not fit back here because i'm you know it, or it's going to be right there at the edge of the fabric so that's a pretty big design but fortunately um, it should be okay, and I'm gonna double check the rest of these hoodies because I'm pretty sure all of them are at least extra large if I'm remembering what he told me correctly. Um, oh Lord, and I forgot about these beanies. I got Lord, y'all, I just haven't realized I got a whole nother three orders to do. Okay, all right, this hoodie is 3x, this hoodie is. Four X. This hoodie is extra large. All right, so we're getting smaller, and this hoodie is extra large. Do I have any more hoodies? Yes, one more hoodie. This one is four X. Another four X. All right, and the rest of these are t-shirts. Okay, so let's take a look at this extra large. All right, here's an extra large, the back of it. Let's see how big this is. Remember, we definitely need 16 and a half. It looks like we got it for sure, for sure, but... 16 and a half. All right. So look at how that's a lot on the back of this hoodie. But, you know, that's what the customer wants. So that's the real estate that we have to cover. So just have to keep that in mind, whether it's embroidery, vinyl, DTF, blah, 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 blah. You have to keep that in mind for um, the space in the back. And so because the hood is in the way, what I like to do is take that yeah, six inches roughly, eight inches, take that eight inches and kind of use that as the gauge and start a little above that. So instead of eight inches, more like six, and then find that nine inches that we need. And so you're looking at center back for putting his information because it is a hoodie and he wants it to be seen whether the hood is down or not. So not my favorite placement, but that's not the point to be favorite and to be typic, typical placement, but that's where we're going to be for this. All right, so there's the center point. Now I want to do a line to make sure that when I am ready to embroider that on the back that it's even is not square but at least as close to straight as possible so i'm going to go ahead and mark this all right now that that's marked i'm going to find that six to eight inches right here make sure that i did that correctly 
because he's going to be wearing it. So it's going to drop about eight inches to right there. So I'm going to mark where eight inches is and try and make sure that I start the design from here down. Okay. So there's the hoodie. It's already marked for our logo. Now I'm going to go ahead and hoop this right here on the table instead of hooping it on the hoop master. <clears throat> All right, he's got something on this darn hoodie. That's crazy to me. I told him I can order these for him instead of getting them from the flea market, but whatever. All right, so left chest logo is right here. Let me grab stabilizer from out of my trusty drawer down here and grab the hoop that I'm going to use. And I'm actually going to use the red line, I think, for this. And to show you the benefit of having two sets of hoops instead of one. All right, so we're gonna start by getting this in place and inside the shirt, the goal is to, I don't know how well you can see this line, but the center is right here and the, the center line where I want the center of the logo is right here. So the goal is to get it centered as close as possible to where it lines up with the center right in here somewhere as close as possible. So this would be dead perfect if I can get it right here like that. So under the shirt, I'm going to slip this under the shirt right in here. And then under the shirt, I'm going to put that on top. And then I'm going to bring this down and sandwich it on the top. But this is going to be on the inside. So for those who don't know, this is a magnetic hoop. It's called the Mighty Hoop. And this is like the best thing since sliced bread, especially if you have a multi-needle machine because they don't make the mighty hoop for the single needle machine, but there are a there there is a type of magnetic hoop for the embroidery machine on Amazon. So and that is in our Amazon store if you're interested in it. Okay, so now if I had this on the hoop master then I can set the hoop master for this 4x shirt so that all I got to do is put this shirt on the hoop master make sure that I put it on the same way um, situated on the hoop master the same way and then my logo will go in the same spot every single time and I won't have to mark the shirts it's actually really really cool really awesome setup and uh, I love it all right so that looks to be about center so because I don't have this on the hoop master, I'm having to, uh, what I'm going to do is do my method of trying to keep it from, because these magnets are very, very, very strong, very strong. They will break your finger if it's in the way and those two magnets clamp onto this. So I kind of like hold my hand here. The the fact that the shirt is in between it is helping buffer it a little bit, but not by much. So I put my whole hand down so that I can try and you see how that pulled up just that quick. And I'm just doing that so that I can see how close I am to being centered. And once I see I'm pretty close, I go ahead and let it go. And it's a little bit, a little bit off right in here. So once you get these things on, they're not easy to take off. I swear they're not. Um, you got to have some strength to get them. So pull that down just a little bit. You don't, just like with a regular hoop, you don't want to stretch the material in the hoop. There we go. All right. So that's ready. That's ready to go on the hoop. I don't know how well you can see the lines now and how it is pretty darn close to centered now. So again, what we're going to do is the logo is in black and then the 
extra highlight parts on the lawnmower are going to be this orange color. But the orange is going to be on the on the lawnmower, so it'll look really good. So let me make sure I have that shade of orange. And then I'm going to have to put it on the embroidery machine because I don't have that color up here. Um, let me see. I don't think neon is in there. Where's my specialty thread? Oh, you know, well, I could pull out that, um, I think they had neon in that. Hold on, y'all. Let me see if D-I-M-E people sent neon thread. I think they did. Um, let's see. All right. Let's see, y'all. All right. Here is the new box that they sent. And this is a little too dark. Here's the neon green. And here's the neon yellow, supposedly. I think, I think that's not, nope, that's not neon enough for the sweatshirt. Hang on. Yeah, see, that's a little, little dark. So let me grab my neon threads because I do have neon. Right here. This is an awesome set though for a beginner. So for those of you who are just trying to get into um, doing embroidery, I'll remind me and I'll put the link in the description for this set so that you'll have a lot of the colors that you'll need um, to do embroidery projects. But of course, neon, you're not going to get too terribly often, so you don't shouldn't have to worry about doing neon anytime soon. But there are instances where neon is needed. But I do have neon threads. And I have more than this, but I'm just pulling this one out for right now. So there's a shade. Not quite, but I'm going to set it to the side. And then here's this one. I'm Now, one thing about me, I am a stickler about the colors being just so. Um, especially because usually I use Madeira thread. This is Madeira. And their color chart is amazing. And they have so many different color variations so that you can pretty much match dead on in most instances with a color that your customer wants. So let me grab my other neon reds. I think this is it. Um, nope, this isn't it. Mm. Oh, I got three all over the place. It's insane how many places I have thread because I don't have room to put them all out. And this stuff takes time to. Oh, I have yellow neon up there already. I didn't realize that. Is that the same yellow? No, that's more of a green, so I can't use that one. And I got neon pink up there already. So it's the orange that is stressing me out right now. Let's see. Um, red, red, red. I bet it's in my cabinet in the other room. So for the time being, we're going to make that work because that's pretty dang close. And I don't think I have another shade of orange. I have shades of green and shades of yellow. But I don't think I have shades of orange. Pretty sure I don't. But once this thing gets to stitching, I'll go look and see before it needs to do the black. And we'll go from there. All right. So let me get this camera set up to show you the embroidery 
machine going. Not set up, but brought over. And hopefully you guys are doing great tonight. This is just going to be a um, chilling out and working type show. Not anything super special. I'm just trying to show you while I work because I have quite a bit I have to do. And... There we go. Then I can... Well... Let's do this. No. Let me put it back where it was. Okay. I was going to try and put it where you can see threading the machine, but... That's not fun to see. So we're going to leave that alone. Alright, so let me thread this thing. Yeah, see, here's the neon green. I got a neon green. Another one. There's That's usually the color hats that he wants. Alright, so we're going to move. I think we'll move you. You move number one. Whoops. To mess myself up. Alrighty. So what I'm doing is changing thread number one and making it neon orange. Uh, there we go. Hello, orange. Aren't you happy to be hanging out with us tonight? This is an industrial machine, so it does not have an auto threader, which has not slowed me down in the least little bit. All right, and I have done his logo many times, so it's in here somewhere. So I just need to find it. Mm. No. Alrighty, and now let's bring this over. And I'm going to thread it through the neck so that we can get to the inside. Alrighty, let me make sure it's got the right threads that are supposed to stitch. So we're going to do black, which is 10. So 10, 1, and 10. Alright, and now, because I'm using this for the first time, I'm going to... Make sure that it's centered where I want it to be. Yeah, just a little bit. And let me do an outline check just to be sure, but I'm more than positive this is fine. And then while this is stitching out, we're going to hoop the other shirt. And then it'll be ready to go as soon as this is done. Alrighty. So there we go there. Let's get her started. We'll check the chat real quick. Is that a five and a half by five and a half? Yes. 
size cutout stabilizer is eight inch square. Hey, Kid of Blue. Hoopmaster is out of my price range. Yeah, well, yeah, it, it's pricey, but it is definitely well worth it if you do multiple, um, if you do multiple items at one time a lot. Hey, River City Creative. Normally only watch, but I want to thank you for taking us along on your embroidery adventures. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, love Mighty Hoops. I have several of five and a half or five and a half, so they are nice for logos and monograms. Yes. Pamela Bradley White. Hello, my dear. Thank you. Camilla Williams. Now it's time to complete my orders. Yeah. Yeah. Working on orders, too. I right, see my puff in the mail. Yes. I have to go back and view last week's. Please do. It is a lot of fun. Um, okay. So, since we're working on orange, I'm going to try to stick with orange and grab the other orange out of the box, which is a 4X as well. And let me see if I can split the screen so that you can see both. I don't know if you can or not. Uh, yeah, let's see which, what camera do we want? We don't want this one. I'm going to try and change the camera so that you can see the cutting table as well. Boom, just like that. All right, and then here we need to figure out why you're tripping. I don't know why. There we go. All right, so I fixed that. So that when it is time, we can use that camera. On computer, it's below the video screen on the phone. And it makes screen small. Don't You don't use WSS? No, I do not, Barb. May I ask a question? Not about Yes, you can ask a question. Always able to ask a question. All right. So let me get this hoodie marked. Now, for a sec, I'm not going to be able to see the question, but go ahead and ask it, and I will answer it as soon as we get to that part but no i don't use wss a lot at all actually um miss barb i tend to only use it for blankets and um towels and even then um i don't i don't use wss a lot And then with this part, I usually don't use this ruler here. I usually just kind of eyeball it, but I'm being particular so that you guys can see what is easy to do. And where is my chalk? There it is. All right. Okay, so here's my straight up and down that I'm going to need. And I'm actually going to move this up a smidge. 
And I'm going to use that line there. And then now I'm going to move to the other side. Do the same thing, except I'm going to make sure this is straight. Alright, so there's the front. And because I have two hoops, I can go ahead and hoop this one. So let me grab another piece of stabilizer out of my trusty stabilizer stash. I love these. These I usually get from off of Amazon. They're pre-cut. Perfect for this type of application because um, I don't have to cut anything. So I mainly keep these for the 4x4 embroidery machine and these 5.5 square Mighty Hoops. Where's my, that is crooked as all outdoors. Yeah, good enough. All right. So it's kind of close. Another way to tell whether or not you got some center is you can use a ruler on top and see if your markings, just for your own personal reference, you can see if your markings are even by putting the ruler just laying it across the top and look so we are scraped on this one so this one is sitting off to the side as soon as the first one is done then we'll get this one and while i'm setting this to the side i'm gonna go ahead and mark the yellow all righty Yeah, this customer got a lot of embroidery for free. That back embroidery I did not charge him for, although I should have. It was purely, purely accidental. But it is what it is. Alright, so... Alright, now on this one... The pocket on this is kind of high to I me. Mean, the pocket is almost to his chest. So we're going to go a little higher on this one. I also like to keep an eye on where pockets and stuff are. So I'm going to actually come up to about 11. Let's do 10 inches on this one because I don't like the way that looks. So 10 inches. Make sure. That's what I say it. Nope, oh, that's 11. So I'll come up just a little bit. And the other thing, y'all, I did forget that sweatshirt sleeves are usually bigger than a t-shirt. So, hopefully that other one ain't too terribly off. But I'll look at it as soon as I take it off the machine. Alrighty. So, this one is marked for the front. Come down 8 inches on the back. I know I didn't mark the back of the other orange shirt, but I was trying to hurry up and get it hooped.
one for right here. Oh, actually. Whoops. Got my rule. Which is why it's cracked. Eight inches. That's where I want the top to be. Top of the design. Oh my gosh. Alrighty. So how far are we? So now we're doing the phone number. So I'm going to go ahead and mark another hoodie. So that these are all... Oh, sorry. Let me check the chat. On computer, oh, okay, read that one. Thank you, the best uni. One thing I like about embroidery, HTBO transfers is instant gratification once the item is done, yes. I love doing left chest after my first one, I'm hooked. That looks great, I'm starting to wish I didn't get rid of my machine before I tried the embroidery. Embroidery is awesome. <clears throat> it's awesome, absolutely love it. Clips coming in again, so we'll have to be busy. Marge, how is your husband, by the way? I'm working on a PE 535. I want to start making patches. Which stabilizer? Okay. Um, beanies. Beanies are awesome sauce. I use Cutaway with beanies. Hey, Avery Head. Um, beanies, I would use um, Cutaway. I, I do use Cutaway. Matter of fact, I have beanies I need to do. Um, and I can show you one already. This is almost done, y'all. Even though before I didn't clean the machine before and my tension um, was off, so some of the bobbin thread is showing. But here's a beanie that I did. And this is cutaway, black cutaway stabilizer so that it will um, match with the beanie in case it gets flipped inside out or something like that. And then with patches, what I use is, um, eh, it depends. It depends on the patch. And hopefully we can show you a patch. But. And there's your, your beading. I did not use a knockdown stitch or anything on that. I just went ahead and stitched it. I did not use a uh, water soluble stabilizer on top of it either. Um, a lot of people will use water soluble stabilizer. I don't use that either. So, and there's the cutaway on the back. So, I have 15 of these I need to do. But those will come tomorrow because that was an additional order. And here is our logo. On the thing did my split screen go? Oh, I see the split screen. Okay, so that's done. Let me grab or lay this down on the cutting table so that I can switch it to that side. Meanwhile, it's done, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab this. I don't have to hoop anything because we've already done it and put this on the machine. Trace just to be sure. Looks great. And then I'm going to stitch this out. Exact same thing. Alrighty, so on this one, I'll take it apart. Take this out, 
Cut this off. Be super careful. Can't tell you how many times I've cut the garment trying to rush, cutting stabilizer. You technically are supposed to leave, technically, according to uh, experts, you're supposed to leave about an inch of stabilizer away from the design, but I usually get a little closer. But there's there's his design. And all I'm doing is rubbing that chalk line away. And then his name goes over here. I think I have his name in my machine. Pretty sure I do. So I'm going to go ahead and get this ready to go on the machine. Because I'm confident that it's on there. And I've been known to be wrong before. But I'm going to take that chance. Go ahead and hook this so that all I got to do is throw it on and put his name. It's too high. Hilarious. Yikes. Bite me. All right. Now I'm going to pull this apart, pull this side down some. And there it's close enough because it's going to be his name. So I don't have to have that perfectly centered. But now this one is ready. Because like I said, I'm pretty sure I have his name programmed into the embroidery machine. Because I've done for him before. And let's check chat. And then I'll mark another one. Uh oh. I changed the camera and the light changed. I think it's out of bobbing. CDDM. Hey, Otis Rushing. How are you? What do you purchase? Stabilizer. I get stabilizer from um, that particular stabilizer, I get from. Um, Amazon. I'm backing up the machine so that because nine times out of ten it's bobbin thread is out and it stitches a little bit forward before it runs. I mean after it runs out it keeps stitching some and as you see bobbin is empty. So we gotta take this bobbin out and put us a new bobbin in. Pretty sure I was using well crap. Pretty sure I was using a black bobbin. Now we're back to working. Um, size of that beanie. This beanie is, I have no clue. Let's see how big this beanie is. Let's see right 
12 inches. It's a 12 inch beanie, 12 inch knit cap. But the, at any rate, the um, squares, I the 8 by 8 squares I get off of Amazon. There is a link in the description to our um, Amazon storefront. And that stabilizer is there. Aside from that, I get stabilizer from, um, on the roll, I get stabilizer from a couple of places. But the easiest place is metroemb.com metro metroemb m-e-t-r-o-e-m-b.com the size of the hoop I was using is the exact same size that I'm doing on the sweatshirts now I do not use tender touch on the back of my embroidery these are for adults so no I don't do that for them cutaway is stronger than tearaway yes where am I purchasing different color stabilizers same place Amazon has different colors and Metro EMV has different colors. And also all stitch, actually. Let me see if I can't get you the all stitch link as well. Um, Amazon, let me get you. So you're saying which one? Are you on our storefront? Where is my so if you are on our storefront? Which is right here. Um, embroidery supplies should be where the stabilizer is. And it is. Here's one. Let's see if it's still available. Yes. This is Tearaway 8x8. So Tearaway is good for the 4x4 embroidery machine. This is for, you know, simple things. In the hoop projects, you can use this for um, in the hoop projects, towels, there's quite a few things you can use stabilizer for. But if you scroll down, um, actually, this is World Widener. Click on their um, store. And they have, there's the tearaway squares. They also have rolls, as you can see. Tearaway, tearaway, where is their cutaway at? Tearaway, tearaway. Oh, they even have iron on tearaway. Cutaway. Cutaway backing 500 sheets, eight by eight. Ooh, that's expensive. That's kind of pricey. Hang on, sugar. Let me get you over to another place. Hang on, hang on. Don't fool with them. Unless you get overnight delivery or whatever, and that's what you want to do. Um, so, let's go to all stitch. It's not what I wanted to go to. Oh. Let's go stabilizers. Cut away. Well. I'm going to put this in the chat. 
and then I want to bring this down. Where is my chat? The chat is right here. There we go. All right. So here's all stitch. And all stitch, you just go right here where it says backings and toppings. You'll cut away, tear away, cover a stitch, which is the tender touch that Miss Avery here was talking about. Fuse and bond heat seal. So if you need to seal um, the backside of some of an embroidery design. Water soluble, WSS, which is what somebody was asking about going on top. Terio Magic Liquid Fabric Stabilizer. Somebody else was asking about Terio Magic. They, they sell it. Puff Foam, which is not to be confused with the Puff Foam that I was showing the other day. Stitch and Melt. Um, stitch and Heat Melt Away Film. And then Solvy Topping. Okay, so there's several different types. And since you're new, let's go over the differences really quickly um to help you out so and shana is correct you can get various stabilizers see which one works best for your application uh, but for generalization purposes we have cutaway so if you click on the cutaway you also can order a swatch book of what their stabilizers look like and how they feel so that you'll know before you actually order it's pretty cool pretty handy um, their classic cutaway, as you see, is $9.28, and you get 125 pieces, so 35 wasn't that bad for 500 pieces. That's why it cost that much, now I think about it. Um, and then here are rolls. You can do a roll of it, and they also have um, All Stitch HD cutaway, so HD higher density. Um, as it says right here, they are appropriate for use on embroidery designs having high stitch counts embroidered to unstable fabric. Okay, so these will tell you what applications they're good for. Okay, so here's a um, HD cutaway. This here's a black cutaway, like what I was showing you on the hoodies. Here's another cutaway backing. This is C025. Don't know what it is. We'll click on it and see. C series line of cutaway embroidery backings are high quality, wet laid stabilizer designed specifically for high speed machine embroidery, meaning the industrial machine over there. This premium line of high quality, stable backings are soft to the touch, delivering a comfortable and wearable final product. Um, so, again, which that's pretty much what is on the back side the stabilizer on that it's very soft and it's kind of squishy just a little bit which is why i don't use tender touch on the back because that stabilizer is very soft i don't see a need to do the tender touch um but if you click on it they'll tell you pretty much some of the better applications for it um, but this is all stitch and as you see they do have different types um, so there's fusible, which means you can iron it to the back side of the garment and then embroider on it, giving it a little bit more stability. Um, then they also have a, a tan color um, application as well for those light colored shirts that you can use. Um, so poly mesh that you'll see right here, poly mesh cutaway. Is good for stretchy, super stretchy stuff like um, T-shirts or you know stuff like that. That's really, really stretchy. Then you have tearaway, which your tearaways they got tearaway is used usually in hats. Um, they have black and white. I don't think they have the tan. Yeah, they don't have the tan for that. They have sticky tearaway. So it has sticky on the back. That's for your fast frames or possibly even your magnetic hoops. All right. Um, rip stitch, which I've never used those. But all of these, there's so many different kinds of stabilizers out there. And all of them have their own specific suggested applications. 
but in general, if you're if it's a wearable garment that's going to be washed a lot, washed and you know whatnot, then you want to use a cutaway because you have to understand when you wash a garment under normal circumstances, right? Just just think logically. And this is what I ask people. Just think logically uh, because there are some people who will argue me up one wall. And, well, they won't argue me because I don't argue with people, but they'll argue up one wall and down the other. You can use tear away on clothing and embroider and it looks just fine. Okay, and you can. It will look fine. But just think logically on this for me. When you wash clothes, just normally wash clothes on a regular basis, think about the clothing that you've had for years and years and years. The more you wash it and wear it, it wears down, right? And a lot of times you get, that's why they, they say the most comfortable pair of underwear have all the holes in it. Or, you know, you have ripped jeans or holes worn in the knees and stuff like that. The most commonly worn things. That's because the garment was constructed in such a way for you to be able to wear it, but it's still just thread at the end of the day or yarn or whatever that's woven together in a tight weave to give you a garment that you can you can own and put on and cover yourself with, right? So in wearing that, it's going to wear out over time. So likewise, embroidery stitches technically are the same thing. The problem is you're adding more weight and you're stretching because you're stretching those holes where the embroidery needle goes in. And so it's pulling apart that area of the shirt. Let me see if I can look, look at, look at this shirt, look at it up close. And it probably could have presented a little bit different had I used water soluble on top, but I don't. So, and I, I don't worry about it. But look at how you can see. I'm going to try and get in super, super close. But you can see how at the top of the thread see how it's pulling and stretching the material of the shirt it's not like super i'm trying to think of a, of a way to put it but you can see where the threads are going in and it kind of distorts the weave it looks better on the hoodie on uh, not the hoodie the uh thingy right here beanie so this is a beanie this is this is um a thicker weave of fabric this is knit sorry a thicker knit of fabric than the hoodie right but notice and you'll you'll be able to see where the bobbin thread is showing which is why the customer doesn't have this one i have it um but you can see where Look at the weave itself. Don't look at the embroidery design or anything, but look at how right here is nice. Right here is nice and straight. Let me turn this inside out. It's stupid to do it that way. Okay. So on this side, the fabric is not distorted at all. You see that? There's no distortion to this knit fabric for this beanie. The lines are nice and straight. It's nice and soft. It's not stretched at all. Those lines are going up and down like they're supposed to. But look at what happens when you stitch on and distort because you're adding extra stitches to something that wasn't meant to have, technically not meant to have stitches. It's supposed to be just a hat. But we're adding embroidery to it so it's bowing and and redistributing and pushing the knit out of the way it's stretching it because this this hat was made to be this hat but we're adding embroidery to it so because you're doing that you need to stabilize that you need to give the thread that extra 
you know, blanket of protection so that as a person wears this hat and they wash it and they wear it and they wash it and they wear it and they wash it and they wear it, that the threads don't buckle or um, distort any or wear out faster, make your garment wear out faster than it was intended to. That's the thing, because you're you're adding more to the structure, the structural integrity of the item that you're wearing. So in normal circumstances, that's why tearaway can be used. You can use tearaway, but you're going to tear away that extra stabilizing that those stitches really need when you're wearing a garment that's going to be manipulated a lot, worn a lot, washed a lot, dried a lot, you know. So that's why with clothing that you wear or it doesn't necessarily be something that you wear, but something that you're going to be washing over and over and over and over. You kind of want to give it some extra stabilizer. It won't hurt anything. That's why even for towels, if you look at some of the more professional embroidery sites out there that recommend stable stabilizers and uses of stabilizer, let me show you a for instance. This is not me just saying this stuff. Okay, hold on. Let me let me pull it up. Oh gosh, sorry. It was the it was. Do I use ballpoint needles on the hoodies? I'm supposed to use ballpoint needles. I'm not using ballpoint needles right now. And that's a shame because I know what I tell y'all all the time, right? In this instance, don't do as I say. Do as, don't do as I do. Do as I say. Um, Three deals through Monday. Uh, this is eembroiderylibrary.com. Absolutely love this website. I do not have any affiliate nothing from this website. And I refer them all the time because they're good they have beautiful embroidery designs their designs are all well done well made never have i had an issue out of any embroidery designs from this website i own so many designs from this website it is ridiculous so definitely check out embroidery library and they have um 70 percent off store wide i did not need to see that anyway yikes um so in addition to this website being awesome sauce you can go to designs by category this is for you newbies now you can go to designs by category you can scroll down to where it says free designs click there once a month they have a free design that you can come and get these so far the mask the i love el and the we're all in this together has been free ever since the beginning of the pandemic when they started when we all started doing masks um, so these three have been on there for free the whole time. So you can go grab those for free, but this r rotates out. So every month they have a free design. So definitely check that out. But if you go up here to help, okay, this is embroiderylibrary.com. We'll go back to the main page right up at the very top. It says help click there. And they have a lot of helpful things, um, that you can look and get questions answered as far as embroidery machine work is concerned, okay? So there is a stitching a design, troubles and solutions, checklist before embroidering a design, fabrics 101, choosing fabric, designs and stabilizer, resolving shifting, shifting, gaping and misaligned stitches, tips for stitching complex high stitch designs, Curing thread aches of shredding and nesting. I'm having trouble with the design. What can I do? Don't worry about that one because I've never had a trouble with their designs. So right here, Fabrics 101. Let's click that. All right. It's really, really cool. You can click on the fabric that you're using and they'll tell you what they recommend. So like Quilters Cotton, for instance. Here's a um, article on how to use Quilters Cotton uh, the best way to handle it but come down here fabrics 101 stabilizer design guide i think is the right thing i'm looking at it is okay so when fabric this is what i've been telling y'all it's not me this isn't eve's word this is me learning from i've been doing embroidery for six years and i've done a lot of research a lot of research and i've looked at a lot of different websites listened to a lot of different experts john deere even included because he's been digitizing and embroidering for darn near how long because he said that his family has been doing it for 
over 50 years. So when you're when you're consulting with professionals like this and they give their recommendations, you kind of expect them to know what the heck they're talking about, right? Instead of just somebody who just got an embroidery machine and decided they didn't want to use cutaway stabilizer, they wanted to use tearaway. And so you can use tearaway, there's nothing wrong with that. You can use tearaway, but listen to what the experts have to say first, okay? Just listen to them, do what you want to do, but listen to what they have to say and understand the reasoning behind it because then when you make your decision, if it doesn't turn out right, you know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. So anyways, notice what it says here. When fabric is produced, manufacturers don't anticipate that anything will be added to it. When embroidering on the fabric, we're adding weight and tension of thread and stitches. The fabric needs to be stronger and more stable to support those stitches. And that is why stabilizer is used with every embroidery project. They said it a whole heck of a lot better than what I did, all right? So if the fabric isn't stabilized properly, you'll see less than stellar results. You might find shifting of your embroidery design, gaping, puckering, dimpling, and more. So choosing the right type of design and stabilizer for your fabric is the key to getting great results, okay? So down here, this is an excellent guide. You can find them all. Um, it, I think this is the PDF. I think. I think this link right here is the PDF where you can download it. But I want you to see something. Usually when you see embroiderers on YouTube or uh, watch tutorials, they'll tell you when you want to embroider a towel, you can use tearaway stabilizer. And you can. Now, what did I just mention? I was just telling you guys. When you have a fabric and it's laundered a lot, Okay, not necessarily worn, but laundered because, you know, the laundry wears out your clothes. God forbid you use Clorox. Who does not use Clorox with their towels? That's what I want to know because in most instances, we're going to want to sanitize our towels. So you add a little bit of Clorox to it. Even if it's colored towels, I still add Clorox to mine. Clorox eats away at fibers. It does. It does an excellent job at sanitizing and bleaching, but it also eats away at the fibers. So washing can wear away your clothes too, all right? So let's go down to, uh, what is that, terry cloth, okay? So we'll go down to terry cloth. Hopefully that's what it's listed on in here. Uh, T-shirts, towels, towels, okay? So towels, terry cloth, linen, and then right here they got the tea, flower sack kind, but we're talking about towels. What stabilizer are they recommending? Can you see that? These are folks who design embroidery designs, who work with doing embroidery on an everyday, regular basis. A whole blame website that they have made millions off of me by themselves with their designs and stuff. Do you think they know what they're talking about? So even with a towel, they suggest cutaway. Why? Because you're washing the towels. Usually you're washing them on a regular basis basis over and over and they're used and worn and I've seen towels worn. As a matter of fact, I still my mom still has some towels from when I was little and they're worn so thin you can about see through them, but you know, she kinda don't want to get rid of those particular ones because they're it's just a memory thing to them. She, even though she's got a whole new set of brand new towels. It's crazy. But anyway, I love you mom. So towels they suggest cutaway. I use tearaway. I don't care. But I do have some towels back there they have a pretty high stitch count and they're all like this, all warped and, and buckled looking like uh, like this bag right here because I didn't use a cutaway. I use, I use a tearaway. So then when I take it out the dryer, it's looking like that. You know what I'm saying? So this isn't the results that you want when you get a towel and you embroider it for a customer or a family member for a gift or whatever and they wash it and pull it out and they're like oh child I ain't having her embroider nothing look at how this looks so that is why when when someone is recommending to you a certain thing make sure that you're doing some additional research and check and see if what they're saying has merit the reason why I say is because I know many, 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 many people, and that's what they suggest is cut away when you're using a garment, when you're embroidering anything that you're going to wear, anything that you're going to launder a whole heck of a lot. 
Now, if you have a quilt, you know what I'm saying, that's going to be a wall hanging, for instance, instead of being something that somebody's going to launder, they're going to hang it up. It's going to be decor. Tear away should work just fine because you're not going to be using that item and washing it and wearing it out on a regular basis. So in that instance, tear away should be all right. You know, so when a person says, yes, you can use tear away on a garment, you can. But if it's going to be worn and laundered, you really need to be using cutaway. All right. So just wanted to pass that little bit of knowledge along. Um, so definitely for you who are trying to get into embroidery and have some confusion about what stabilizer to get, blah, 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 what needle. This article also covers the needle size. Sharp needle, sharp needle. Let's go up and see if we can find sweatshirt. Sweatshirts. What we're embroidering right now, even though it's a hoodie, it's still a sweatshirt, right? Sweatshirts, cutaway stabilizer, any, they say a sharp needle. Um, you really should use a ballpoint needle because it's still a jersey knit type of fabric, but it's a thick jersey knit. So that's why I feel like I can get away with the sharp needle and am getting away with the sharp needle. But when you're using um, anything that's a stretchy material, you kind of really need to be using a ballpoint needle, okay? That's the only discrepancy that I see on here, but that's only because I've spoken and learned from a uh, embroidery machine or sewing machine needle expert. So I consulted with them and they've been doing uh, needles for their own needles for more years than I even know because they've been in business a very, very long time. All right, so yeah, check this out. Like I said, they do have a downloadable thing here and I will put a link to this in the chat so that you can um, use this, refer back to it. But going back to the um, all stitch, definitely check them out. Um, cover a stitch is really cool. Cover a stitch is where um, the back side of the embroidery like yeah it's a beanie so the back side of this embroidery this when they wear it is going against especially if they don't wear a t-shirt is going against bare skin so they keep from irritating their skin as Avery head was pointing out instead of just leaving cutting this out and leaving it cover it with cover a stitch which is what's on your screen right now Okay, so cover this up and keep it from, but the embroidery thread and the stabilizer is very soft. So I'm not, and these are going on menly men, so I'm not worried about covering that for them. Um, not like that. Um, then also they have black as well that does the same thing. So that's what cover a stitch is. And sometimes they call that tender touch. So you may see it on a different website as tender touch, All right? Then, in addition to cover a stitch, they have fuse and bond. So, what fuse and bond um, is, oh, the wrong thing I'm thinking. This is heat seal film for doing patch backing or applique. So, what that does is you can put this to the back of a fabric, fuse it to the back of a fabric, be able to cut it out and it shouldn't fray. And then you can heat apply it to an item like um a patch for instance you can put the glue on the back of the patch and then press it to the shirt that's what your fuse and bond um oh here we go the du permanent double-sided iron-on fusible sealing film so that's what um fuse and bond is water soluble stabilizers water soluble stabilizer is a topper in most instances okay so there are two different types three different types of water soluble stabilizer. The first is the most common. The first one is a really thin film and it puts me in the mind of, um, it puts me in the mind of, you remember, well, I'm telling on myself a little bit. I'm 45. So when I was in school, Elmer's glue is what we had, the white Elmer's glue. And we would, pour it on our hand because we was bored, didn't have anything else that's better to do, and spread it on our hand, right? And then take it and peel it off like a second skin. And you know how thin and how it feels just like that, y'all. No lie, it really does. It feels just like that when you peel it off and that, how it's kind of soft and pliable, but 
thin and you could see through it. That's exactly what the water soluble stabilizer reminds me of. So with that application, what you would use that for is Miss Barb recommended using it on the sweatshirts because the sweatshirts have a kind of a loft is squishy. It's a squishy fabric. But towels, on the other hand, they have a pile to it. Um, I used to have a towel right here. I don't have it anymore. So I'll just use this rag, even though this is a crusty rag. I use it for some of everything using taking off ink and nail polish. But anyway, so you see these fibers that stick up on a towel. So when you go to embroider on this, a lot of times if you don't use a water soluble on top, those these fibers that stick up will cover your stitches and kind of hide them somewhat. It won't stand out and be nice and crisp on the surface of the fabric. So you use the water soluble, you hoop, hoop your item, so your hoop, your stabilizer cut, tear away, even though they suggest they cut away, right? It's a rag. It's going to be washed. But anyways, your hoop, your stabilizer, your towel, right? Then your WSS, water soluble stabilizer, the thin wispy kind. Then you do the embroidery on top of that, okay? And what will happen is it will help keep your stitches up above these fibers. Then when you're done, you can tear away the WSS water soluble stabilizer you can tear it away and it'll leave your stitches intact all right and if any pieces are left behind as soon as you wash it it'll melt away the what's on top okay so that's water water soluble stabilizer that's one type another type is a little bit thicker and i can show you that one i wish i had um some water soluble right here to show you but i well i do dang it Here's some water soluble. I can go ahead and show it to you. And do I have the other kind? I do. Where are you? The other kind is where? That's not it, I don't think, but it looks just like it. So we're going to use it. All right. I don't think that's what this is, but it looks like it. So I'll show you what it looks somewhat like. Yeah, close enough. All right, that's not what this is. This is blue. Okay, so here is the first one I was telling you about. This is the water soluble stabilizer that looks like the Elmer's glue that you peel off your hand. See how thin and flexible is very soft and pliable. Very, very soft. You can see, see through it a little bit. Okay, so you can see my hand on the other side. So this is what you would use as a topper on top of towels. Um, I could have used those on top of the beanies. You can use them on blankets, fleece blankets. Um, the sweatshirts, I could have used them on the sweat. Anything that's kind of squishy and you don't want your stitches to sink, even though this stuff is kind of like thin and you're like, how the heck can it help? Don't know, it does, all right? So this is water soluble stabilizer. You have to keep it protected because this will melt in water. If I were to spritz water on it, it would melt, okay? So you can't have this exposed to weather. So I always keep mine in the plastic bag, all right? The other one that I was gonna tell you about is right here. And this one is what some people call Badge Master. Um, this particular company calls it Ultra Solvy. All right, and this is a lot thicker. All right, you can still kind of see through it a little bit, just a little bit, but it's much thicker. Okay, it's nowhere near as thin and it's sturdier. So, a lot of times people use this for um, patches making patches um gosh what else sometimes some in the hoop projects can be used with this this is wash away too so this will melt as well melt away um so let's see lace work applique thread sketching buttonholes i don't know how that would work um scarves hoopless embroidery Blah, blah, blah is what they say use this for. But I usually use it for like patches, doing patches. 
All right, so that's another type that's wash away. The third wash away type is one of my favorites. And like I said, this isn't quite that. That's not what this is, but it looks almost just like it in a way. No, nah, actually it don't. This is kind of close, but it it's not really see-through, but it looks more white, like fabric, and it'll feel more like fabric. I'm trying to think where it is. I have some. I just don't know where it is. But it's a wash away as well. And I usually use that for my freestanding lace projects um, because you can stitch on it. It feels and looks almost like a more of a fabric, but it washes away too because your freestanding lace projects, you um, want the stabilizer to all wash away and just leave the lace behind. And I do have some freestanding lace over here in my... Um, in my box of goodies. I need to find some freestanding lace that's actually completed, like some earrings or something instead of this. This this is a, a set of petals for a flower that I never finished. But this is freestanding lace. So you can do this on the embroidery machine and now you see there's nothing in there. You can't use cutaway or tear away for this. You have to use something that will dissolve in water. So that's what the freestanding lace is for. I mean, the um, water soluble stabilizer. That's more, it's called Vilene is what a lot of places name it. Vilene. Um, water soluble stabilizer. Okay. So you have tear away, cut away, cover a stitch. Now your water soluble stabilizers. So now let's go to, you do have some that are fusible stabilizers, which I, I'm assuming they have some. I don't know why they're not listed. Fusible stabilizers are, um, they have glue on the back of them. And they look just like regular stabilizer. I'm trying to see, did I put it back? If I put it back, then it's over here. Um... It looks like regular stabilizer, but is this it? Yep, this is it. So with this one, it looks just like regular stabilizer. I didn't know we were going to do a stabilizer one-on-one. I apologize. But here is regular cutaway stabilizer. It's a... Um, it's a mesh type of um, cutaway stabilizer. Very sturdy, um, will not stretch when you put this on the back of a shirt. And this is just a plain old, come on, let's, let's get you to focus. It's just a plain old stabilizer. Okay, nothing fancy, it's black. And it's a nice lightweight stabilizer that you can use behind like t-shirts and stuff. Here's a stabilizer, but this is the same. It looks the, the exact same thing, right? They look exactly the same. They're the same weight and everything. The only difference with this stabilizer is the back of it is shiny. See how it's, re come on thing. Come on thing, there we go. See how it's reflecting light? See how it's shiny? That's because this stabilizer has a coating of glue on the back. It's a low temperature glue. And what you would do is cut out the stabilizer in to cover the area where the embroidery is gonna go. And then um, use a iron or heat press, very low temperature, very low temperature, iron heat press, and press this to the back side of what you're going to embroider and use this as the stabilizer. So you're not like hooping stabilizer. You don't have to worry about it shifting when you're hooping or anything like that. And then um, you hoop the garment with the stabilizer adhered to it and then stitch out your item. And then when you're done, in most instances, you can even, you know, with a little bit of coaxing, you can peel it off all the way up to where the design is and trim away, or you can just leave it. It's entirely up to you. I have a couple of jackets in there that I've used this on, especially the little teeny ones for the little girls, uh, because it's hard to hoop those. And um, with those, I just left it. I didn't trim away at it um, because it doesn't hurt anything. It's soft, and so it doesn't hurt them to use that. So that's another stabilizer option 
for you. They have that in black and white um, is available. Um, Terio Magic Liquid. Um, I do have some. It's over there. That one is like, just think spray starch times 10,000. That's what Terio Magic is. It's like a spray starch and you spray it. You know what happens when you spray spray starch on the shirt? It stiffens it, right? Well, this Terio Magic stiffens it, you know, pretty significantly. And what that does is it helps keep your garment from stretching, right? So uh, say, for instance, a T-shirt is going to stretch when you embroider it. But if you use that Terio Magic um, on that thin fabric and let it dry, it will dry very, very stiff. And then you stitch out what you want on it. And instead of it stretching and going on like for instance the sweatshirt is doing instead of it stretching it'll stay stiff and then when you finish with it you can wash the terio magic out and it'll be kind of like you had stabilizer but you didn't really use any okay so that's terio magic that's on this list um and that's just um they even have some that just like the water soluble washes away they have some that you can heat away so that's on here too so there's quite a few options um, that you can get with stabilizer this website has um, a lot of embroidery supplies on it all stitches out of Jersey I think or up that way up north and um, he ships out very quickly so definitely check them out for your embroidery supplies has anyone ever embroidered New Era hats? I don't don't know what New Era hurts to. Um, on towels, the back of the design shows. Yes, it does. Allison, definitely. So if you go into any store, um, Bed Bath and Beyond, for instance, and you look at their embroidered towels, the back of the embroidery shows. So that I mean that's a factor of it. That's a part of it of doing embroidery. Hey Mina, how are you? Hey, Nicole. Thank you. I'm sorry, y'all. Why? What happened? Uh, structure heads. I just saw something. Um, is there a standard weight stabilizer that can be used? Yes. Um, it is. There, but in most instances, I just use like a medium weight. That's my go-to. Um, the stabilizer, for instance, right here. This isn't really considered heavyweight. This is considered a medium weight stabilizer. It's kind of just a little stiff, just a little stiff, a little heavy, just a little bit. Uh, but it's kind of spongy feeling. I don't know how to explain it, but um, I like a medium weight more so than the lightweight like this one. Because I don't know why it's just I just do. But in a lot of instances, the weight of your stabilizer needs to match the amount of your stitches. Okay, so if I'm remembering uh, a reference correctly, it's like for every 15,000 stitches, you need a piece of lightweight stabilizer or something along those lines. So if it's 30,000, then you need me medium weight or two pieces of lightweight. Um, anything over that, then of course you're beefing up your stabilizer. So it just depends on what project you're working on. Structured hats. Um, on structured hats, a lot of times I don't use stabilizer at all. In most instances, I don't I don't use stabilizer on structured hats because the structure is already there. Um, when I do use stabilizer, a lot of times it looks the exact same, and it. Um, Sometimes the tension is off when I use stabilizer. So like on this one, I used, did not use stabilizer at all. No tear away, no nothing. And usually with hats, I use tear away anyway. And it's not really a, a weight, so to speak, for that. This one, I did use some stabilizer. I can't remember why, but right after I stitched this one, with that stabilizer in there, the machine acted up, and I haven't been able to finish this order, which I need to finish. Another order that needs to be done. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um. So yeah. Whoops. I want to do that. 
Uh, let's see. Make sure I don't have any other. I use Badge Master Water Soluble for freestanding lights. A lot of people do, and that's fine. That's fine. Valine is what feels like regular fabric. It is a wash away for use in making lace. Yes, I usually use Valine for my um, freestanding lace because it's a little lighter. It's lighter than the Badge Master, so it washes away faster. Um, and it's not as gummy, thick feeling um, as the Badge Master tends to be. Um, I'll have to look at what the new era hats are, Marissa, because I've never heard of them. Hey, Shonda Smiles Willis, how are you? How do you make the stabilizer look good when you can see it? Um, honestly, I appreciate you. I took you away from your tutorial. Oh, um, I mean, I was just working. It's not really a tutorial. I was just working, but um, kind of stressed out about it, so it's no big deal. I'll get to it. Um, it's only 10 30, so I got time to I'll be up late. But the stabilizer, this is this is the thing, Allison, that I had to get over. Um, when you are giving someone something or if you're embroidering something, in most instances, your most folks are going to look at only see the front. They're pretty much only going to be looking at the front of something. So, for instance, if you do kitchen towels um, and you put the kitchen towel on the, you know how they drape it over the stove? Usually they drape it in such a way only the front of that embroidery is showing. The only time that embroidery, the back, you will see it is if they take that towel off and use it for something. And at that point, you know, it's being used. It's not um, really, nobody is really trying to focus on the back part they're more excited about what's on the front because in most instances when you're embroidering something especially if it's a gift it's going to be something that a person wants to see so let's pick on somebody in here if big boy is still in here i don't know if he is or not but if he is he absolutely loves the dallas cowboys right so if i were to embroider a set of towels for him with a dallas cowboys logo on it he is not going to care about the backside of that towel and how it looks. And I had to get over that because what I ended up doing was in the very, very beginning when I first started doing embroidery, I was doing baby bibs and burp cloths and stuff like that. Well, with my baby bibs and burp cloths, um, if you were to just buy some baby bib blanks and embroider on them, you could see the embroidery on the back and the stabilizer. And I thought that was ugly and blankets, baby blankets. So what I came up with was make my own baby bibs, embroider the fabric first, then attach the fabric after I've embroidered the baby bibs and the burp cloths and the baby blankets, attach the second fabric on the back. And then you can't see the back of the embroidery design genius right well it was to a certain degree the thing is it takes longer to do whatever it is that you're working on it burned me with baby blankets and i'll tell you that here in a minute so instead of just getting a blanket embroidering on it and giving it as the gift as it is because i'm taking that extra step yeah it looks good but now all of that extra time that it's taken for me to attach the terry cloth so the terry cloth onto the back and trim it and turn it inside out you know get it stitched closed and do the top stitching now i'm taking a bib that should have been you know that could have been five dollars you know because i got a blank and i stitched on it and now this bib is like thirty dollars because i've i had to spend that extra time add the extra material and blah 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 blah, blah right so then when I started doing baby blankets, you're talking about a big blanket. You're embroidering the baby's name and all of that stuff. And yeah, it's gorgeous and it looks great. But then you add that second layer of fabric, stitch around, turn it inside out, close it up, then top stitch. That's all. It was a lot of work. It was a lot of work. And it made me not want to do baby blankets because they're so big and to keep them straight and you know, laid out like there was, and, and when I was like, okay, these are babies, so I'm just going to do a small blanket. I'm sorry, y'all still are on um, the wrong camera, but instead of um, 
putting the blankets on, um, you know, little blankets, like crib size blankets, people didn't want that. They're like, that's too little. We want it bigger. I want a throw size. I don't have the space to do a throw size blanket. So it made it a lot more complicated all because I didn't want to see the back of the stitches. And usually when I tried to hit them with the price that it should have been because I was doing all that extra work, they was turning up their nose at it and like, I don't want to pay that much. Some people, not everybody. I don't want to pay that much, but look at all the extra work I'm putting into it. So don't fret over the, and I had to learn, don't fret over the back of the embroidery, okay? Um, the only time I would kind of be super particular about the back of the embroidery for instance, with all of my hats, I'm going to tell you what I do. Usually, when a person wears the hat, you don't see you don't see the inside of the hat, right? But the person who wears the hat does. So what I'll tend to do is I will get a lighter and kind of like really quickly go over the inside of this hat to clean up those frayed threads that are sticking out on the back side of the design of that hat, just like they are here on the back of this, um, on the back of this hoodie. You see how all of those are sticking, sticking straight out from the back of this embroidery design. See all those threads sticking out? So I would take a lighter and just quickly, shoot, 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 just like that over those threads and it would kind of melt the threads down some and that'll clean that up if I wanted to. Or clippers. You know, just take a pair of shavers, clippers, and go over it and cut those threads, clean them up. That's, you know, for the high dollar clients and all of that jazz, I would do that um, sometimes. But for other than that, I don't do too much else to the back of the embroidery. You know, so um, you're welcome, Craftable Theme. Hey, sweet arts, custom creations, welcome. <laughs> so thank you, Pamela Bradley White. I appreciate that. Oh, big boy is here. Ha! See, big boy. Would you care, big boy, about the backside of the towels? Or would you, you know, you want it to be nice and pretty on the back of them towels? You do, He would just care about the fact that it was cowboys was on the front of them towels. That's all that would matter to him. So when you are, oh, no, Pamela Bradley, but I didn't know they, they, you did tell me they played today. I'm sorry they lost. Um, but when you, Allison, when you're doing embroidery designs, I'm, I'm telling you, it's, we fret over that more than the person who gets it. We fret over that more. And I'm going to tell you what else made me feel good. I'm going to, this is, I'm going to tell you what else made me feel good. I went into Belk's. And I was looking at the back of stuff because my daughter was shopping for something. I can't remember what it was. And she was taking forever. So I was going through like Ralph Lauren Polo. Um, I can't even think of the name of some of these other high dollar things this helper was looking at. And if you look at the back of some of their shirts and stuff with the embroidery, their embroidery is not the best. And the backside, even then, isn't the best. I mean, it's mass produced. They're not taking the time to care what that stuff looks like. So, you know, if you take the time and start looking at embroidery that's out there in the world, you'd be like, bruh, what in the world was this person drinking on when they stitched this out? And people buy it because all they care about is what's on the front, not what's on the back. So, but you can make yourself feel better by just taking the time to trim around it nice and neat and try to shape it up a little bit. You know, the, the for instance, with this, let's go ahead and trim it because it needs to be trimmed anyway so I don't forget and send it to the customer with a big square like this on the back of their stuff. So basically what you would be, um, what you would do is just take your time and, you know, just make sure it's nice and even when you trim it, you know, see, just like that. Make sure that you don't cut the customer's product nice and neat. See how nice and neat that is? And just take the time and trim around it. I've only had one client, one, that was like, do we have to have the stabilizer around it? Bruh, that's, 
that's embroidery. That's it. and it wasn't the client. It was another. They did screen printing, and he didn't understand. He didn't know anything about embroidery, so he wanted to offer embroidery in his shop. And when I was like, okay, here's the embroidery, and he saw the stabilizer on the back, he was like, does it have to have that? And I'm like, it's stabilizer. You have to have stabilizer with your embroidery. You know, so he had to learn and, you know, is he was like, well, can we cut closer? No, because you're not supposed to have it that close up on your stitches. It's supposed to be away. Can you get these shirts, please, and get them to the customer and see if they complain? Customer didn't complain. So, yeah, so you can you can clean it up yourself, you know, to a certain degree up to a certain point. And let me show you. Uh, I don't have my because I don't usually keep the lighters up here even though I should because this is usually where I use them um let's see so I have a supply of embroidery lighters and let's see if I can get it where you can shoot See if I can get it where you can see it, and hopefully not burn his stuff. Can you see it? Nope. Okay, that should work. And I pretty much just take the lighter. Let me stand up so I can see what the heck I'm doing. So I pretty much just take the lighter and just go over. See how they just kind of melt away? You know. It doesn't have to be perfect, but just enough to where it kind of eats away at those strands some. Now, the only thing I don't like about doing it that way is even though it eats away at it, it kind of like melts it somewhat. And so it can leave like a little melty ball on the end of those threads. And I don't like that. That's why I personally prefer the uh, shavers. Just shave shoop, straight across like that. If that was, you know, a order that I felt needed that type of treatment. So, but here we go. Here's one hoodie with the logo on the chest. And then we need to put his name on the other side. That's all. 4X. <sighs> Yay, me. What else do we have? Any other questions? Just the Cowboys. And just the Cowboys is, yeah, I'm telling you, he, that's all that would matter to him. Good night, precious love. I'd probably burn the whole in thing. You do have to be careful, but the thing is, don't linger. Just, and I promise, soon as your, as soon as that flame hit it, it's going to sink, shrink right up. It doesn't take a whole lot. And at the worst case, if you move too quick, just come back by another swipe pretty quick it you you'd be surprised it, it won't burn as quickly as you think it would so but that's something that I would do for um some customers it, it just depends on the order it depends on the order so let's see how long have I been on I don't want to hold y'all hostage for too long let me see has it been two does that take two hours oh my, and 40 minutes Two hours and 40 minutes, y'all. I cannot believe that. So at any rate, that's what um, I'm going to be doing today. I need to re-hoop that shirt. And did I hoop this one? Yeah, I hooped that one. So I need to put that on and put his name on it. And then, which camera is that? That camera. And then, hey, Mik Michaela, how are you? Aloha to you as well, ma'am. Wish I was aloha and right there with you, girl. Aloha and right there with you. Now, let me look and see. I'm pretty sure I have his name in my machine already. But I'm going to have to check that. Uh, let's get out of that. Embroidery design. No... No. 
no name there. Maybe I don't have his name in here. Nope. I don't have his name in here. I thought I did. Okay. I'm sure. Yeah, no, I don't have it. All right. So I need to put his name. All right. So I'm going to wait on this one since I don't have his name. I had to rehoop that because I got to digitize his name. So we have two logos on the front of two um, orange hoodies. So now let's get a logo on a neon hoodie. So we need to go to the cutting table for that one. And remember, we already marked um, a yellow hoodie. So all we should have to do is hoop it. So where is the hoodie that I marked? It is not the it is this one. All right. All right. So we're going to put the logo right here, as you can see. So let's get this situated under there. Grab a piece of stabilizer. Right here. You know that's way off. Did I say that correctly? It was too high, wasn't it? I need to push this up. There we go. That's off. So let me get this moved and we'll double check. Put it through the center. The smid off. And now we are straight. So with this one, we're doing black and neon yellow. So let's switch over to the embroidery cam. Alrighty, and I'm going to put that design back up because I can't use the other one. And I'm going to move the machine. Whoops, wrong way. Alright, and this time we're going to use black uh, 13. Is that the right thread? Hold on. Where's the other thread? Right here. This one is just the same thread, 1935. What color is this one? Nineteen thirty-five is the same one. So that's the color we're gonna go with. We don't have another color. All right. So what is that? 13? No, 15. 13, 10, 15, and 10. All righty. So let's let that start. Actually, Miss Barb, we're going to do an experiment. Since you made a suggestion, 
we're going to see what this looks like with some water soluble stabilizer on it. Where did I put it just that quick? Right here. Yes, I gotta put it back anyways. And then that also kind of sort of shows you guys how the water soluble stabilizer works to a certain degree. Okay, so here is a piece of water soluble stabilizer. So I've cut the thread. So all I'm going to do is just lay this on top, just like so, and let it stitch. Now, what that should do is help the stitches stay. A little higher but we'll see how well it turns out I'm gonna start putting my stabilizers back where they're supposed to be and then I'll come and check the chat hope I don't bump the wire to the live stream the other stabilizer that's what I'm looking for. That one goes under there. This one goes over here. Trying to stay orderly, y'all. Trying to stay orderly. Crazy. I don't know why that sounds like that. All right. The other stabilizer. Put it up. Let me make sure I cut this one. Yes, that's the one I just cut. Y'all, I really think I'm going to go ahead and stitch that back on there. Well, no, I'm already set up for the um, front. So let's finish all the fronts. Good night, Michaela. Hey, Sonya Siegler. Do these machines use a special program to make the designs or you program directly on the machine itself? These machines um, are, the design is programmed outside of the machine and then the um, design is sent over to the machine with a uh, thumb drive. And the program we use is, there's a couple of programs to create the design from scratch. It's called digitizing. Digitizing can be done with SoArt, which a link for SoArt Pro is in the description below and both programs are on my website. So if you click the one link, it'll take you to the other one too, or to the website where the other one is rather. And then we have um, Wilcom Hatch, which I think I put the link in the description earlier, which you may not have access to now that I think about. Hey, the best uni, honey. How are you? Welcome. Well, welcome back, because you were here earlier. 
All right, so let's go back to the cutting table as well. And again, here's another one. I think this one is a 4X too. No, this is a 3X. Okay, so this one is 29 inches wide. And I need a left chest and a right chest on this one. So again, I'm going to come up a couple of inches because I forgot how big that sleeve is. And we're going to come right here and put a mark up because the center needs to be in line with the neck usually. And then we're going to make sure that that's straight. Let's move this because it's throwing me off. There's that one. Here's this one. And there's our two marks. And I'm going to go ahead and hoop this one. far down And under the shirt, I'm just trying to make sure that the stabilizer covers the entire ring under there. Oh, I'm off. Come on, get it together. Get it together. Check that because that looks crooked. Yeah, it is slightly. That logo, I don't think it will make a difference, but let me show you on the back side. See, I need to make sure that the entire area has stabilizer behind all of it, is what I was going for. There are a few instances where that doesn't matter, but in this instance, I need that to matter because the design is going to take up a lot of that space. So this one is ready for um, doing embroidery. Um, let me grab another one to mark so that when that one over there is done, this one going to be ready to put on.
I know. This one is marked for the next hooping. And then I have, let's see, this one, this one is stitched, right? Yes. I need a different pile for the ones that have been stitched already. Just the back of the chair is going to have to be it. Look at this. Oh, these things. Not the best quality. Alrighty, we got this one marked, and that's it for t-shirts, and this one is almost, yeah, it's starting the phone number, so then we can throw the other one on right after. How many do you have left to do? Um, with the, oh, have a good night, Miss Barb. Oh, Miss Barb, I was going to let you see what it looked like with the uh, water soluble on top. The hoodies, I have two orange and then one, two, three, four neon yellow ones. So I've already stitched the two orange logo on the front. This one is about to be finished, so that leaves three that need the logo on the front. Then after we do the logo, names are going to have to be put on the right chest and then after doing the right chest the backs need to be done on all six hoodies so that's what we have left and I don't have the names programmed yet so gotta get that done as well but I do have the design for the back already thank you Andrea Oh, Miss Barb is saying good night to baby, baby giant. Good night, baby giant. Oh, let's see, make sure I'm not missing. Hey, happy Scrappy 45. Welcome. Yeah, Miss Barb, I'm sorry. I thought you were saying good night. Um, but you were saying good night to baby giant. Almost. We got one more number to do after this zero. And then we'll go ahead and throw the other one on and then go to the cutting table. Boom, just like that. Now, this is the one that has the um, water soluble on it. So, I'm going to show you guys that. But we're going to throw this on first so that this can be working while we're exploring the other. Ooh, that's in a perfect spot. That's what's so nice. Move it just a smidge, and then that's perfect. All right, so here is, let's go over here. Yes, dense we are. 
Looks like you got, yeah, I got my work cut out for me. I got a lot of work to do. It doesn't make sense how much work I have to do. Okay, so here is, right, let's get that out of there. All right, here is without the water soluble. I may have to put it on the other camera. And here is with the water soluble. So we'll put it side by side. And then here's how water soluble works. You just tear it off when you're done. And where you see little pieces still left on there, we can just use a Q-tip and water and get that off, you know, if continuing to tear it, don't get rid of it. I found out why that thing sounds like that. So here is yellow is with it. Nah, so we'll have to go to the other camera because that's crazy. I'm not going to be able to do that. Let's get rid of that chalk. Hopefully. I forgot this is why I'm yellow. some uh, spray for that chalk that's kind of dark oh and another thing to show you see the uh, scraggly threads I can use my stitch eraser it sounds horrible and you can also just go over the back really quick hit it and that'll get rid of a lot of that too instead of the lighter if you're worried about burning alrighty so there's that one And I keep a bottle of spritz in case, but I'm going to try and get that line out with something different. I'm not going to be able to do that anymore on this yellow. I don't know what I was thinking. All right, I'm going to bring this to the other camera so that you can see what it looks like with it and without it. Oh, actually, no. Hold on. Let's hoop the next one so that it's already ready when it's time to load it on the machine. No point in missing that boat. So we're going to put, go ahead and put this hoop on. Come on. Yikes, that is way off the world. Oh, I keep messing it up. This needs to go up, right? Much better. 
I need it to come over some. That's why it's better to use the darn um, hoop master. Then you don't have to do all this fighting. Ta-da! Alright, so this one is ready. And let's switch you to this one. So here is the one with, well, let's see if I can show it. Side by side. Well, not side by side, but up and above. Okay, so the top one is without water soluble stabilizer. The bottom one is with. This one does seem to look darker and sharper, but it could be, you know, that it's uh, yellow, the neon could be. Oh man, Barb, yeah, them the stitchy racer just zooms right over the top of them. So yeah, definitely use that. I don't know if it looks any. Does it look like using it is worth it? I know for me with especially with this order, trying to get that uh what are soluble stabilize all of it out of there is like more work than I really want to be bothered with. But especially being that I'm already gonna have to work extra to put all that stuff on the back. I mean, I'm not working, but that's I gotta hoop it and had to digitize it, and it was just a lot. But I mean, all of it can be done fairly easily if I just take my time and focus and not um, get distracted. So, but there are, how far are you from Greensboro? Greensburger is two hours? No, I've moved two and a half hours from me now. Greensburger. I have family there. Family in Greensburger. Well, in-law family, but still family. Not not my in-law. I have a cousin whose husband and family live there. Pretty sure it's Greensboro, not Winston. Yes, it's Greensboro, because his family are attorneys up there. And matter of fact, his son is going to school to be an attorney. So yeah, got family up there. Thank you. Yeah, it's a decent design. It's not a bad design. It's just a lot. I like the yellow sweatshirt. Yeah, that yellow, that that uh, neon. I'm a fan of neon anyway. I love neon stuff. Neon clothes and whatnot. So while while that is stitching. Something else I need to do is um, I need to be ordering shirts. I can't do that right now. Um, so, did I save this? Hold on. Yeah, I saved it. The other shirt for the girls. No, I know what we can do. I know what we can do. I have an opportunity to relocate with my job, and I was considering it, thinking about you since I don't know anyone. Oh, man, North Carolina is sweet. Greensboro area is, is a nice area. Thank you, big boy Prince, for late night working. Woo! 
<laughs> I was up all night last night working. Trying real hard not to be up all night tonight working, but we'll see how that goes. Um, are you on? You're not going live, are you? Is this ain't today Thursday? Oh shoot! If you was, that would have been an hour ago, wouldn't it? My bad. And I got distracted. Were you going live tonight, big boy? I don't even. I don't even. I'm working. I I completely forgot that today was Thursday. Cause all I've been doing is working all week except for Wednesday. Wednesday I had I slept. I was tired, y'all. Ooh, that darn um jacket order beat me up and beat me down working all through the night and through the next morning. That was rough. I haven't I'm not a spring chicken anymore, so that was rough. No, okay. I'm sorry about that. I should have asked earlier. Um, okay, so we've got this one already hooped and ready to go as soon as that's done. And then I have, let me make sure. Okay, so this one needs a left chest logo. So we'll hoop that one. This one is done. This one is done left chest. So I need to turn that where I can see it. So we got one more left chest to do. This one is done. That one needs to be done. Okay. So after that, I think I'm going to go ahead and work on the back. Even though I haven't heard from him. At this point, he's just going to have to... He still ain't responded. And I asked him yesterday. So, obviously, it's not that important. until figure I need um I need thank you thank you I appreciate that I need um I was going to tell y'all, I need to figure out them, these shirts and stuff, y'all, that I got to do next week in the DTF. Let me try and print some of this darn DTF. Well, no, that's something else. See, I'm getting distracted. I need to get, I got so much I got to figure out. That's the problem. Because those other shirts, is that done? Oh, shoot, that's done. Hold on. Let's switch. Mm -hmm. Let's switch, let's switch. The, um, I got to figure out those DTF shirts. See, there we go. This is that one with no water soluble on top. All right. So let's set that right there. Put this one on. Hopefully, it's close and I don't have to move it like that one was. Move it up, move it over, which is fine. And boom. Make sure that's good. Nothing in the way. And let's switch this to this. Nope. That. Alrighty. And here's this one. And again, this bar, look, even though my stitch eraser sounds like death warmed over, because I use it so much, alrighty. 
that's that. So eventually we'll have to hoop this to put the name on the other side of that. That's kind of low. Let me look at this iron thing. No, it's right over my boob. All right. And this one needs to be hooped. So here's the next one. That sounds terrible. My machine sounds horrible. I need a tune up or something. I don't like the way that sounds. It's a stabilizer. Ouch. Check, even though it looks straight. Yep, it's straight. All right, here's the last left chest. Alrighty, let's clean up our mess. Even though we're gonna make some more, but it's all right. Then, what else do I need to do? Put the names through the backs. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do the backs of these darn shirts, y'all, because I just, uh. All right, so the hoop, what do we say? 16, it's 16 and a half by 9 is the size of that design so let me see how big this hoop is so i think oh man i'm gonna have to change the arms on my machine but it's all right at least i'll be able to do it i think let's see i didn't want to have to change the arms on my machine so let's see how big this is this says 11 by 13, All right? So that's not going to work. This hoop anyways is not going to work. Because we said 16. So give me a sec. Let's look at this other hoop. Might not be able to use a... Uh... That's going to be too big. That hoop. I'm gonna show you guys. This is the biggest hoop that goes with this machine. I'm gonna show it to you on the table. It goes with the red line. This is the biggest hoop. It goes with the red line. So this is like massive. Oh, let's see how wide this joker is. So this is 21 by 10 so I should be able to embroider roughly 20 by 10 ish in this hoop so theoretically this would work with the 4x I can hoop the 4x with this hoop I don't think I can do the XL with this hoop so um yikes yikes y'all oh my gosh why did he have to ask for so much i should have just told him i'd do um not embroidery but uh dtf that's what i should have said because then i wouldn't have to worry about this i just press it can you accidentally cut stitches yes you can 
if you're not careful and if you angle it wrong. Yes. Good night, Miss Barb. You're welcome. Good night, DTC Queen. Oh, cool. Miss uh, Lisa Nelson, that would be neat. And then you'd be right there. Y'all could be crafting buddies. Woo! We like crafting buddies. You got somebody you can turn to and ask questions and stuff. This is Tearaway. Don't want that. Y'all, I might have to figure out a way to shrink that because that is too big. Now that I'm sitting here thinking about that. Or, one if I did not embroider. Nah, it would probably have to fit if I don't embroider that. So what happens when you know people personally. Um, alright. I gotta figure this out because these, what, how big, hold on. What are y'all looking at? Y'all are looking at that. That's that. Actually, let's do this. I need to see if I can change this. So, this is 0.75. So, quarter of an inch tall letters. The letters are not quite an inch. But if I shrink it too little, then technically people won't be able to read it, so to speak. figure this out because so this is too big so I probably can bring in the words a little closer and that will help so instead of everything being this big of a space in between um, looks good though. That's the only bad thing. Um, see, this is the type of stuff that people don't realize they're not paying me for this, and it's annoying because this is this is extra. It has nothing to do with what I should be doing. I'm not a designer or a digitizer. But anyway, shut up, Eve. No point in talking about that. Um, Alright. So let's group you back. And make sure you're still centered. Alright. I don't know that that's going to make a big enough difference. Now that I'm sitting here looking at it, I'll be going through all of that. Let's say 13, even if I took that down to 13, that's not going to work. Because how tall is this? This is, well, it's half an inch, but see, half an inch, ain't nobody going to be able to read that from a distance. That's what my concern is. 
but then again it ain't too much bigger i'm sorry smaller than a quarter of an inch three quarters of an inch sorry that's 13 inches it's technically, it's still too big, technically. Let me see. I'm trying to get it to fit in here. Is what I'm trying to do. Thirteen inches wide, according to this and see what my stitch area actually is okay that's done so i need to hurry up that's what i thought so technically this is something else that folks need to know about embroidery hoops So the other thing about embroidery hoops is this. And it'll be easier for me to show you on here than on there. But this is a, um, and this goes for all embroidery hoops. All embroidery hoops. This is a five and a half, five and a half inch square. So it's five and a half inches this way and five and a half inches that way. When you use your tape measure, you will see that you technically, that's upside down, my bad. You technically don't get five and a half inches out of this hoop. Oh, I guess you can't see that, can you? My bad. There we go. Okay. So you technically don't get five and a half inches. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Crooked. Come on. Can't you get up against the side of the hoop, please? Thanks. There we go. See, that's more like five and a quarter. So... It's like, just because it says five and a half, you don't get five and a half. Just like with the four by four embroidery machine, with the four by four embroidery machine hoop, you don't get four inches. You only get 100 millimeters, and that's like 3.86 inches. 
So you have to keep that in mind when you're working with embroidery designs and be like, well, why can't I get this design to fit? Why the machine won't read it is four inches. That's because it's too big. Can't be a true four inches. It has to be metric 100 millimeters. So keep that in mind with embroidery. Y'all, I'm getting tired. I'm getting tired. So I'm probably going to have to stop because I'm losing my voice and everything. I can feel it. And like I said, I have so much that needs to be done tomorrow that it's insane. Hey, Diane Country Hut. Thank you. Can you put the names in one row? Um... Going straight down the shirt. And that'll also, that'll put me longer than, what did I tell you the other length was on that big hoop? So right now, I'm, I, I mean, I was at nine inches tall with it being two rows side by side. So if I take that one row and put it down, it's going to put me well over the 13 inches that, I mean, you, you see what I'm saying? I'm still too big, no matter which route I take. But doing it, I just shrunk it down to 12 and 3 quarters. So I probably can drop it down to 12 and a half and make it work. Let me see something. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me see how big these letters are. Okay, so these are not, they're just over a quarter inch. If I'm looking at that right. Right. So the letters on the front of the shirt are a quarter inch. Whereas the ones on the back are over. If with me shrinking it. They are. Over half an inch. Which is. Wow, that's pretty small. We're going to make that shirt. I'm thinking he's going to have to go with vinyl, and that's just that's just how that's going to have to work because embroidery. I don't have um. Because I would have to split up the embroidery design. I don't want to do that. Because now you're talking about a hooping for the logo on the front, a hooping for the name, and two more hoopings on the back just to get all those letters on there in a size that... And then I got to figure out how to measure to get it to hoop. the right size so six hoodies times two hoopings on the back i'm already hooping 12 times for the front i gotta hoop another 12 that's 24 hoopings for this order you didn't pay that much for this order so that's a that's a hard no for me so we may have to just do vinyl or, um, thank you, Uni. 
Can you tell him I'm tired? I'm about to. I'm about to. Uh, all that. I'm tired. And then thinking when I come up with stuff, when I come against testing things like a roadblock of sorts, like this is a roadblock to me. Um, it is aggravating to me. So I'm like tired and I really don't want to, <laughs> I really don't want to think about that. So the last one is there. So let's switch gears. I'm just going to, um, leave this like it is for the time being and we'll switch gears. So let me close this out. Now I'll worry about putting his name and stuff on there later. So the next thing I need to do is um, the shirts for the girls. And that is rhinestones. So how did I do this? Um, it wasn't a silhouette. I think it was in. Um, okay. So. Let me close this out. I'm going to use Make the Cut. I was going to open up Corel, but I'm going to use Make the Cut. Okay. So, the sweatshirts with the gold and purple stones. There are... How many girls? I need to send the invoice for that too. I need to burn money and order these stones. There are nine girls. So the front of the shirts are going to have the Greek letters. And the back of the shirts are going to have a number, like a... Uh, football jersey, you know, a number with a name over the top of it. So, what I'm going to do, I've already looked this up, as you can see, and I'm going to set these up for these shirts, right? So, originally, how big is this? This is high, five inches high. And this is for a SS6 size stone. So I'm going to make this for an SS10 size stone. And in order to do that and make the cut, I have to make it bigger. Now I could do this in Corel, but I don't want to. So that's why I'm doing it here. So that's. 0.122, not quite big enough for SS10. Let's try it again. 1283. So I'm going to show you what I'm doing. Um, I made it bigger and I'm clicking on one of the circles and I'm checking the size up here to see how big the circle is. And it's telling me it's 0.1329. So that's big enough for an SS10 size stone. So I'm going to shrink it down just a smidge and see if I can't get that. There we go. I'm going to see if I can't get it a little bit smaller. So that's 13, 18. I want it to be closer to 13. 13, 11. Let's do a little bit more. Let's see what this is. 12, 98. That's too small. Because if it's under 0.13, then the rhinestone will not fit into the holes. So I'm going to go a little bit uh, larger. Thirteen even. Alright, so this is perfect. Now I'm going to um, use this as a point of reference from this point forward for the rest of the numbers. 
because if the numbers are the same height as this one, then the holes should be the same size. So I'm going to use this as a bit of a cheat sheet. So this is a six inch, 6.2386 inch letter tall. All right, so to me, that's tall enough for the jersey. And now I need to put the name on the back. And they want the name with gold on the inside and purple outside for the letters. So I need to get the names. Um, and I'm going to, it's nine girls, right? Yeah. So let me go ahead and get these numbers actually. So that's done and I can move them out the way. Leave it and worry about it tomorrow. My niece does HTV. She was excited to get a 150T order. She gave me the breakdown of what she needed. She figured her cost. I point out to her with all the work that was needed, she would have only made a dollar and 35 percent per shirt, so-called profit. Thank goodness she didn't take the order. That gym owner was trying to take advantage of her. Yeah, because they make you think that you're doing. Um, they make you think that what you're doing is. A good deal and it's not all right so that let me make sure what did I take what did I say this size was okay so that sweatshirt is done a hoodie is done 6.2386 let me see something 6.2386 now let's see nope still the holes are still let's go three nine five Oh, no, that was right. Three, you know what? Forget it. Thirteen oh two. That's good enough. So this two is a little bit bigger. Join that. Move it out the way. Now I'm gonna bring in the three. Point two three eight six. Let's check the size. Twelve ninety three. So I'm going to make this bigger. Let's see what size this is now. Thirteen oh one. This is perfect. So join these. Bring this over. All right. Let's grab four. So technically those sweatshirts are they should be working but I'm not when the machine's not working when the machine's not running you're not making money oops that was too big all right so let's check this 1302 that's perfect size let's join that together so these will all be done when I'm ready to use them. That was four, so let's get five. Point two, three, six, and then stretch it out a smidge more. Let me check the circle. Nope, not big enough. Check the circle. 1307, good enough. And not too much, so that's great. That's five. Now let's bring in six. Circle 1304, that's perfect. Join. So let's now do seven.
this is actually not a um This is actually not, hold on. Thirteen oh one, perfect. This is, so fonts are, there's a couple of ways to do it. So like there's the fonts over here under texts and fonts. Um, there are like this one, TRW is the rhinestone world. So you can buy rhinestone fonts from the rhinestone wizard and they become uh, TTF fonts that you install in your system, you can use those and make the cut. Uh, but these are actually files that I cannot for the life of me remember where I got them from. Um, but they are standalone, like they're actually, instead of technically being a font, they're files. So I can't like type or whatever. And I'll show you an example of another. And I got to remember where I got that one too from. Um, oh crap. What was this one? 6.2386. That's what it was. But give me a sec. And maybe I'll have. Ooh, no, maybe no. Maybe I'll have something in. The other file to tell me where I got it from. Let me see. There we go. It's a little big, but great. Right. And now nine. Wait a minute. Am I supposed to be? No, I'm not outlining, outlining these things. God. All right. Six point two three eight six. All right, and then make it a little bigger. What size is this? 1304, that's perfect. All right, so now I have all of my numbers. They're all the right size, and all of the, the dots are no longer separated. So when I import that into Cricut, it will import as one group, one solid set of circles instead of being individual circles that it has to line down the page okay so here's the number one and i'm going to come up here and i'm going to grab my font if i'm not mistaken it is um Marshall Letty font for team names. Okay, so here are I gotta remember how big these are actually. All right, so the first name I think was London, so let's go L and let me look at how big this is. This is 2.2 .2 inches high. I don't think that's big enough. Technically, that's not big enough. Um, let's see how big is his font? Does he have one with an outline that's um, sport? Um, stadium varsity? W Collegiate. No, it's college. Let's see. Nope, that's not right. That's not what I'm looking for. Athletic. Nope, that's what's the face? That's not stone. Okay, I don't think he has it. If I'm correct. Well, I don't have it from him. Okay, so. This is, and this is SS10 size. What was SS16? SS16 is
Where did I put that file? Mm. Is it empty? Did I take the stuff out of it already? I done took the stuff out of it already. Why I tell you? That means it's on the D drive. All right. Um. Let me go up here so if I can't find it in the group. How big? And I need to make a reference of this and have not. Rhinestone full size. There we go. Alright, so what I want is SS16. So SS10 is 0 0.130. SS16 is 172. So I need these holes to be 172. So we can use a larger stone. And therefore, make it bigger. Because 9 comes out of 10. It's not going to be what they want. That's 179. I need 172. One seven five. One seven two. All right. Yikes! You know I just thought of y'all. I need to do this with the other program. Okay, so I'm going to save this. I'm going to save this. Did you find that code? the program I did not as a matter of fact I didn't look for it again um, I do know it's in that forum somewhere so I couldn't remember when we looked in that did it have a place to search I don't think it had a place to search which is why I couldn't find it so y'all I'm, I'm going to probably go to bed because My feet are getting cold, and one of the um, a big problem that I have is with my with my feet, rather, uh, fibromyalgia and whatnot. When my feet get cold, I get sick. So I don't want to get sick. I need to get my feet warmed up. Oh, okay. Here's some varsity letters that are, let's see, are these, oh gosh, these aren't outlined either. Or are they? No. These are not outlined. So these would have been big enough, but they want them outlined. Road. Um, sports jersey. No, this is not the right one. I was just using sports bold. No, it was numbers. I should have used these. These look simpler. Leave it to me. Um, sport jersey numbers. This is what I was looking for. Okay. So, I need this to be all right so that's that 
So now I can put that into Cricut if I want to. All right, so one of the other programs that works really well with rhinestones, I'm going to show you this quick, and then I'm going to have to go get my feet warm so that I don't get sick, um, is the Rhinestone Wizard. Okay, the Rhinestone Wizard is a macro program, a program of macros that you add to Corel Draw. And what TR, what the Rhinestone Wizard does is it kind of, you can use it to create your own rhinestone designs. Um, and he has tons of tutorials to show how to use the program to make your own rhinestone designs. Like for instance, I know the best uni uses Silhouette Business Edition. And she even shows you guys in a couple of her videos how she uses that to get um, her, how she uses that to do the outline lettering for Mississippi, the word Mississippi, right? Well, with the Rhinestone Wizard, Matt created a program that is supposed to make it very easy to make your own Rhinestone designs. The only problem is no Rhinestone software is like 100%, like works perfectly to just put a picture up and it'll boom, make a Rhinestone design. No software does that. So that being the case, um, it makes it a little challenging to, um, in my opinion, tedious to make a rhinestone design. But his program has so many positives to it, it's ridiculous. The program is like $600 or something like that. Um, and that, if I'm remembering correctly, does not include the cost of Corel Draw because you have to have Corel Draw as well. So, but the program is pretty much worth it. But I'm gonna show you um, what I would need to do with, for instance, that font that I was gonna use. So let me do new, and then we'll do um, 24 by 24 to square. And I'm going to import that file. So let's go see if, if I'm thinking correctly. Script individual upper and lower case, and we said the letter L. All right, so I'm going to import that. Nope, that's script. That's the wrong thing. That's not what I want. My bad. Import, not script. We want um, team names, font for team names. Okay. So let's go to L and import that. There we go. And this is what I was just working with, right? So this file, let me make sure yep, it's all joined together. So I'm going to ungroup all objects. And it should make it into circles, individual circles and then a square, I mean this rectangle around it, it should, right? You see the magnifying glass because it's working. Um, and technically I need to really use um, one of his fonts. So I really need to go and see if he has a font, especially with it being Black Friday and he has stuff on sale, he may have a font that will work with what I need it to do. But this isn't, this is tripping. Why is that tripping? This little bit of circles should not be taken as long. Uni, I think my program is acting up just like yours. Um, best Uni, what software? This one that I'm doing, okay, so the one I was using before is Make the Cut. And I'm pretty sure I've shown you Make the Cut before. This one here is Corel Draw, but I'm going to be using the Rhinestone Wizard software, which is a, which is like here's Corel Draw, and you want Corel Draw to um, make your rhinestone design, but he created a program to help your program move properly to do rhinestone designs. So why is this being done? 
y'all, bruh, come on, man. All I wanted you to do was break the party. I don't know how to cancel this. And I can't do control alt delete. This one throat no, there we go. Let's do that. Maybe that'll work. Carmen, I want to um What am I doing? Y'all look, it ain't even closed out. That's crazy. This is dumb. Now I see how Uni felt earlier. And I don't want to do control alt delete because that's like not helpful. Maybe that's the Lord telling me to go to bed. But I really wanted y'all to see how cool the Rhinestone Wizard really is. It's actually a very cool program. Yeah, it's not working. I don't know why. That's crazy. Especially for something so simple. It shouldn't be locking up like that. Um, let me see something. Because it won't let me. Um, yeah, no, I can't do anything. This is some garbage. Y'all, it's not working, so I guess it don't even make sense for me to continue. Which is sad, because I really wanted y'all to see this. Let me see if something is um, That doesn't even work. Oh! Alright, let me close this. In task. All right, there we go. Woo, boy. All right, well, let's try this again. But we're gonna do it different this time, just to show you real quick, and then I'm gonna get off of here and go to bed because I'm tired. All right, so let's create a new document again. All right, and so here's my document, and what I'm going to do is type. The baby's name, I think, was London. L-O-N-D-O-N, -O -N -O right? And here's the baby's name. Uh, whoops. Right here. This is 24 point, which is not big enough. So I'm going to make it 150 just so that we can see it better. All right. So the Rhinestone Wizard, as I mentioned, is an add-on program. It's a macro program that goes with Corel Draw. Right now, I'm just working in Corel Draw. I mean, just working with Corel Draw. But let's, there's a button that I installed over here for, that says TRW. When you click it, the TRW Rhinestone Wizard is going to pop up over here. So it's going to operate on top of Corel Draw and make Corel Draw do stuff. For instance, this is the baby's name, London. So let's make London's name Rhinestones, right? So all I'm going to do is come up here. Let me move this over some. And there's two arrows up in the top left hand corner of this this macro right so when you open it up here are all of my rhinestone fonts that i've installed uh, or that i've added to it so 
you know, it has all the fonts. Like, here are all the fonts right here. But I took the rhinestone fonts and put them up here so that I can get to them easier. So, say for instance, let's try... I'm going to do something funky. So, as you see, this is just your basic Arial font. So, I'm going to turn this into a stadium font, right? So, let's click... Let me, well, let me highlight this first. Just like that. And now, I'm going to click Stadium Stones. And see, it changed it to the font. Because he has it programmed where it will automatically... Um, turn any font into the font that you need it to be, right? So let me go back. I don't like that. Let's go to, um, what's athletic? No, that's right. Athletic was um, vinyl, so I don't want that. Uh, let's go, what is this one? Okay. That's kind of cute. It's not going to be for the shirt, but just, that's kind of cute. So I'm going to go see if I can't find a font that's going to be closer to what I want. So the cool thing I absolutely love with this is also available in um, this next part is available in Silhouette, right? So here's her name already changed over to his rhinestone font, right? But this is not SS10 size holes. So right here in this drop down box in his program, his add on, notice here's a list of all the stone sizes. There's SS6, SS8, SS10, 16, 20, 30, 34. So let's say I want to change it to SS10. So I'm going to select SS10 and then I'm going to click this button right here to tell it to change all of the circles to the SS10 size. So when you click that, now it put it to the right size. So these are size SS10 size holes. But that's kind of small. Um, this is actually 2.3 inches. And I, I really think it needs to be bigger. So now I'm going to change it to SS16 and see how big it looks now. So I selected SS16 in the drop down box. And when I click the resize, not all stones are 0.173. Would you like to replace stones? Yes. And now it's all of these holes are the right size for SS16 stones. And so now the letters are three inches tall. And this is going to work a lot better for the back of the sweatshirt than the two inch letters. Right. So that's the rhinestone wizard. That's just one of the features of rhinestone wizard. I'm going to show you something else that's really, really, really cool with his program. I absolutely love this part. Right. So. Right now, you just see these are the circles for the rhinestones. But let's actually turn this to rhinestones, okay? So look at all these rhinestones here are the different colors of rhinestones that he offers at the rhinestone world. Your more common colors, all right? So let us choose, eh, we'll go with something kind of easy to see. Let's go with this pretty blue stone. This one is TRW blue. All right. So when you click the stone, notice all of the circles turn blue, kind of close to the color of the stone. Right. So the other thing with his program is when you design rhinestone designs for people, a lot of times they're like, well, I don't know. How will that look? Will that look okay? I don't know that that'll look okay. You can do a mock-up within his program. So here is the baby's name. This is one, and I'm going to move this over so that I have more space. All right. And what I'm going to do is right here in um, this area, you'll see a tab that says mockups, right? So I'm going to select mockups, and I'm going to show what this looks like on, let's say, um, a hoodie. Let's show what this looks like on a hoodie. So let's go to men's and then we'll just get a hooded sweatshirt front to see what this will look like on a hoodie. And this is the cool thing right here. Two cool things actually right here. There's a checkbox that says simulate stones. Let's click that checkbox. 
so that it'll look like rhinestones. And then you can also do a watermark so that once you do, uh, say for instance, I want to sell hoodies that say London, like not a person's name, but like the actual, you know, city of London, then I can put that and then put a watermark and put this, what I'm about to show you on your website and sell the shirts. It's really, really cool, but I'm not going to watermark it. Um, and then what we're going to do is click on the hoodie. Watch this, y'all. And now remember, I put it to simulate the stones. So let's click on the hoodie. And boom, just like that. It's huge, unfortunately. But you zoom in and look, it looks like stones. See, Can you see the stone detail on there? Now, keep in mind, I did have those letters spaced out pretty wide. I can push them together and it won't look that far apart. Let's see if we can do a better representation of what I'm trying to show y'all. So let I hit the back button and where are we at? We're back on here and I'm going to move these over. Actually, let's group these. Hopefully we won't have to worry about it killing it for us. Okay, so there's that one. Let's group these. Let's group these. Whoops. Group objects. Give me a sec, Uni, and I'll look up the, the real price because I'm telling uh, something is $600 roughly or, or more, but hold on. Group objects. But I can't remember if that price includes Corel Draw or not. So give me a sec, and I'll let you know for sure. All right, and here's let's group these and move this over. I'm just doing something real super quick and then group these and move it over. All right. So here's um, London. Whoops. Yikes. I moved that like all kinds of wrong. I should have left it where it was. All right. So now here's the word London. All right. And let us. Um, instead of SS16, no, I'm going to leave it SS16. Um, we did blue stones before, so let's go with Uni's color. Let's go with red. Let's go with red. Whoops, hold on, come on. Y'all know I was. Okay, there's the red stones. All right, and now let's do, um, let's do a unisex shirt. So t-shirt front. All right, simulate stones, and we're going to put the word London on a shirt. All right, so let's click go, and there's the word London across the shirt, and notice it looks like stones. It has this, the look of stones instead of just red dots, All right? So you can put this on your website, or let's say, yeah, that's white. I don't like that white, so I'm going to click on the shirt, and over here on the right-hand side are a bunch of different colors. Let's find black and click black. And we just turn the shirt black. And so this is what London looks like in rhinestones on a black shirt. Let's say that's a red. Let's put it on a gray shirt. So I have the shirt. Click on the shirt. Select the shirt. Let's click on gray. That's what it looks like on a gray shirt. So you can send this to your customer and your customer, and you're like, look, this is the SS16 size stones you wanted. This is what it looks like. This is how big those letters are going to be on your shirt. Are you sure this is what you want? So now that I'm sitting here looking at it, that's way too big. So I can't do those letters in that size. But at any rate, so you can tell the customer, this is this is how it's going to look. So if they don't like it, then you can make changes. The mock-ups are much easier to try and fix and make look better than you trying to cut out a whole bunch of template, brush a whole bunch of stones, and it don't look right. All right, so let's do this. Let's go back. We're back at London. Um, let me ungroup all, which is probably going to be the worst thing I need to do because it locked up before. Group objects. Yeah, maybe I don't have to. Okay, so let's see if it'll let me drop these down to SS10. So I came to the drop down menu right here and I hit SS10 and I'm going to resize all the stones and it did. Okay, so it's much smaller now. And we're going to leave them with the red stones. This time, since the word is smaller, and I know these are going on women's shirts, 
Let's go women's and we'll do a women's uh, V-neck shirt front. All right. So simulate stones. Let's put this on a V-neck shirt. And that's what it looks like on the women's V-neck shirt. And look, it simulates the stones again. All right. And that's the white shirt. We want it to be, let's click on the shirt and we're going to put that on a green shirt. Why did I pick green? Let's go with a, uh, what's something good to go with? Let's go green. No, that's what I got. Duh. Um, Navy? Navy. So this is a really cool program. Um, it's actually very neat. And you can get the fonts and it makes it a lot easier. I'm going to close this out um, and go to his website um, and bring it down. What is this? So let's go to the rhinestone world.com. The rhinestone world. All right. So look, I see the rhinestone wizard back there. So maybe it is on Black Friday sale. I don't know. Um, art packs, fonts. All the fonts are 40% off. Stones are on sale. Supplies are on sale. Color Spark, all of that stuff is on sale. I don't see the software being on sale. Okay. So let's go to Yeah, I don't see the software being on sale. So here's software, right? So let's click on software. Shop all software rather. Okay. So you do, you can get a 30 day trial uni. So if you wanted to try it out, you can get a 30 day trial. The problem is you'll need to get Corel. So you can get a free trial Corel and free trial the Rhinestone Wizard and try them both for 30 days. Um, but it actually will take you over 30 days to really, really learn this program. All right. Especially if you don't have much time to commit to it. But um, so they do have, oh, something, it is on sale. It is on sale. My bad. I lied. So, <clears throat> let's see what's the least expensive we got on here. Ouch. Um, okay. So, if you don't have Corel Draw, you can get this bundle right here. It's Corel Draw with the Design Wizard 5.0. And you get 500, I'm sorry, five artwork packs and a store credit of $100 to use in the store that you can use to get fonts, you can use to get more designs, blah, 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 blah. Because the Rhinestone Wizard works with more than just the Rhinestones. It also works with um, SVG files and stuff like that. $769. Normally, he has it for $889. All right. So... That's actually a pretty decent deal because the Corel Draw right now, and it's an older version of Corel Draw though, <clears throat> but the Corel Draw one time purchase is $399, it's $400 or the newest Corel, and that's probably on sale. $75 on your first year of the annual plan. No, okay. So it's 400 to buy the software for Corel Draw. All right, and what was that pop-up? Extra 10% off, so you can get 10% off of that, $40 roughly. So if you don't have Corel Draw, you can get it for $769. But if you do already have Corel Draw, then you can get one of these others, all right? So here's another pack. Um, that is the Design Wizard, five artwork packs, and a fifty store fifty dollar store credit for five sixty nine. Um, and then 
if these are upgrades. So these wouldn't apply because you wouldn't have Rhinestone Wizard already. So these are the prices, either $569 or $769. So $200 for the software if you buy the older Corel Draw 218, which is what I did. I have the 2018. I upgraded. <clears throat> now, if you come up here to fonts, and then you do rhinestone fonts, you'll see he has 985 rhinestone fonts that you can program into the rhinestone wizard and use them um, without having, that's not rhinestone. Is that rhinestone? Yeah, it is. Okay, that you can program into it and type and, and do just like you saw me do. I typed the baby's name and then I selected the font that I wanted and it automatically changed it into the rhinestone font. All right, so he has pages and pages of fonts that you can choose from. And that's why I said I really need to go through these and see if he has the um, font that I'm looking for. And then that way I don't have to do anything other than just type it out and make it work. I mean, I don't see the chat. I blocked it. Hey, Flawless. This program works for Windows. Yes. Can it go to Cricut to cut? Yes. Yes. She said yellow. Oh, yellow would have been cute. I, oh, I don't close it out. <clears throat> hey, Mary Brown. <laughs> you say flawless. I need this program. It's never on sale. It's on sale now for right now. Free Corel Draw free trial is 16 days. And TRW software is free trial for 30 days. Might have to try those free trials. Hold on. Did I look at that wrong? Corel Draw. Yeah, it did not say 30 days. My bad. It just says free trial. I apologize. Thank you for correcting me on that, DTC Queen. 16 days with the trial, like she said. So, um, again, you you need a month to learn this program. You really do. But <clears throat> he has a lot of uh, video tutorials, tutorials that are free, or you can buy tutorials to... Um, You can buy tutorials so that you can follow along at a certain pace or learn exactly what you want. And they also have training that you can buy as well. So it's not just, you know, watching a um, video. You can actually have some hands-on training. So here are all the pages, um, you know. And again, the other thing with this program is more than just fonts. He also has designs, all right? So you can get rhinestone designs. And he even has, um, now the one, one other thing that they offer that I absolutely love, absolutely beyond love with um, what he has done is he offers what's called decals. And you can buy the pack that comes with the decals that you can actually make small decals that go on people's cars and stuff and make a killing if you have the market for it. You know what I'm saying? So, um, like, for instance, is this one? I can't remember. No, this isn't one. Hold on. Where is his... Um, Designs, mini packs, decal designs. Brian, no, I don't want to do that. Let's see if I can just pull, if it'll just pull up. Um, no, it doesn't. Let me search for it. Like, okay, here's one. He has a large pack somewhere. 
But like you can use this to do like the little bow on a car. See how in the back car window there's a little ribbon back there? And it's made for the decal to go on a car. He has a whole package of these things somewhere. Um, Because I, I think I bought it. I meant to buy it. Um, I'm pretty sure I bought it. Let me see how I find it. But at any rate, so yeah, the Rockstar World has some really nice stuff. Um, and yes, you can um, you can do your decals and stuff like that and send it over to Cricut or Silhouette. Yes, you can. Um, you just need to be able to check and make sure that the circles are the right size when it comes over because that can be a pain no matter what program you're using but at any rate so yeah that's rhinestone world definitely check out his stuff and yes it is definitely um there's there he, he has some good stuff there's no no denying that whatsoever at all actually and and it's no need to to knock a person's hustle because there's it's no reason to do so. His stuff is very good. It, and if you learn how to use it, it's very good. Uh, but, you know, at any rate. So, yeah, let me know um, if you do do the trial and how well it works for you and whatnot. Uh, but meanwhile, I'm getting ready to lay my butt down because I am worn flap out. And I still have a ton of work to do. So, I doubt I'll be going live on Sunday. Um, I need to, I think. I know I need to get with my captains. And getting with the captains is going to be interesting because um, some of them don't like for me to wait to the last minute to give designs and stuff. So, I got to figure that out. Even though we talked about it already. We already talked about what we were supposed to do this month. But we just just got to um, actually do it. So, at any rate, thank y'all for hanging out with me tonight. It was fun. I'm getting ready to go get under the heating blanket and warm up my legs and my feet. I love y'all. Thoroughly enjoy doing sweatshirts and talking about bling and whatnot with you. But it's time for a half to go. <laughs> so, I hope you guys have a good night. And I look forward to seeing y'all in other folks' lives over the next couple of nights. Um, and Sunday, I think we'll be going live. But I also need to check and see where I am with my um, orders. So, at any rate, you guys have a good evening. And I look forward to seeing you all later. Have a good night. Bye.